G'day everyone, welcome to Ruin Season 2, Episode 3. Thank you so much for joining us. All you guys watching through Facebook three, and YouTube as season well. Three uh, episode two, right? Season 3, far out. I still can't even believe it myself, mate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, an extra special welcome to you guys as well, your pay, uh, our wonderful Patreon supporters as well, who your awesome support enables us to bring you this uh, visual presentation uh, from Restream and all the content that you like and the guests that you enjoy. Hammer, mate, how good is it to have the footy back? How have you been? Mate, I've been good. Uh, mate, it's awesome to have the footy back. We're going to talk about that a little bit later in the show. Uh, the the All-Stars game um, last weekend, I was lucky enough to attend. And uh, this weekend, we got trials coming up. Um, but, yeah, uh, I just want to echo your thanks, too, to our wonderful Patreon subscribers, mate, um, whose support does allow us to do what we do here every week, uh, which is bring uh, everyone the best uh, Vodafone Warriors content on all social media platforms. So, um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we got uh, another fantastic show tonight, and it's one that we really love doing, and that is having a chat with one of our past legends. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, uh, why don't you add him to the chat, and uh, I'll introduce him to all our, our followers, and we can get the chat underway. So tonight's guest played uh, 64 NRL games over a six-year career. He played 25 for the North Queensland Cowboys, 39 for our beloved Warriors, scoring 10 career tries. Uh, and he also represented Greece in, in the Rugby League. Uh, it's great to have him with us. Uh, please welcome Warrior 128, Georgie Gaddis. Hey, George, how are you, mate? Thanks for joining us. Uh, good to be here, guys. Um, thanks for having me on the show. No worries, George. It's, uh, yeah, as, as I said, pleasure yeah, to have yeah. you here. Um, we're going to start by taking you all the way back to the very beginning of your Rugby League journey. Can you tell us where you first started playing Rugby League? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Townsville junior. I um, you know, I, I came through as a a, a schoolboy there, and uh, very much aspired to play for the Cowboys. Um, uh, thing things didn't quite work out there as a junior. Come very uh, close to be, being contracted. I was I, I played um in a very successful Kerwin Bears high school program. We made the national semi final, and unfortunately. Um, in, in, the, in the final, I, uh, I injured my knee. Uh, prior to that, prior to that game, I was I was assured I was a I was a certain selection for the for the Cowboys. I, I remember, and I was, remember running out, just you know, felt invincible and done my knee uh, in that match, and uh, I didn't hear another word from the Cowboys. So uh, I've had to I had to go. I had to start my little football pilgrimage and. Saw me move. Saw me um, have to do my rehab on my own. Uh, eventually, I moved to, to to Brisbane and played a bit of state league football there with the mighty West Panthers. Yep. And uh, uh, I found my way back to I found my way back to Townsville a few years later and got a start and got to play my first NRL game there with the Cowboys. Oh, oh. I was going to say you, you you grew up playing for South Townsville and Centrals in the Townsville District Junior Rugby League. That's um, right. I was going to ask how did you come to play for the West Panthers in the Queensland Cup? But you kind of just intimated that. But was that all of, of on your own back? You just went down there, had an open trial, and and that was pretty much it. Yeah, look, <clears throat> it was it was probably at, at a time just before um, I guess the state league was so. Uh, accessible for North Queensland players, you know. Um, we we had those players were starting to filter down uh, and, and play there. We, we'd obviously been a lot of successful uh, <clears throat> NRL uh, Australian rugby league players who, who came from up up north and made their way down to play Broncos and other um, you know New South Wales rugby league clubs, but. It, it, it wasn't happening that regularly at that stage, and, and I just felt I felt like I had something to prove. Um, yep. And I had a couple other friends who, who just moved down to Brisbane, and they, they wanted to have a, a have a, have a go at that particular club. And I'd I'd heard good things about West culture there, and I just lobbed up on their door. I just lo literally lobbed up on their door and went with the attitude that I was gonna I was gonna train hard and. Um, <clears throat> Force my way into their state league side. Uh, we'll we'll and, get to uh, it a bit. I was going to say and, we'll uh, get to it a bit later on, but I think 
your work ethic and, and the way you backed yourself and that was something that endeared you to to Warriors fans when you got over over the ditch as well, bro. It's um it looks like it's something that you've you've had your whole career. Um, you know, having to prove yourself, work hard and and get to where you are. Yeah, I've, you know, I, I, I'm a little bit stubborn and a little bit um, competitive. Um, you know, I don't like to be told I, I can't do something. And, um, you know, it, it was always a dream of mine to play NRL. And, and um, you know, I probably had a lot of doubters. And I remember uh, a coach of mine um, from Centrals, he was also the inaugural Cowboys coach. And um, I remember when I injured my knee playing schoolboys football um, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the Commonwealth Bank Cup semi final. Um, I sort of, uh, again, the Cowboys prior to that had offered me, Gary assured me a, a contract for the following year in the under, under 19s competition. Um, and after that, I never heard another word. So, I had to make a bit of a decision of whether I was going to give this footy thing a, a crack, like the door had closed in North Queensland. So uh, I went and saw Grant Bell. He was um, he was sort of, you know, I guess a, a mentor in my junior football, you know. Uh, he, he was an A-grade coach for Centrals uh, at the time uh, and he, he, he coached us to our first grand final win in 25 years and we'd sort of won and I, and I went to him uh, – <clears throat> Uh, I, I went to him after I'd done my knee. I said, "Look, I'd like to, I'd like to have a crack going down, down south and playing for West. Can you, can you, can you give me a bit of a reference?" And he sort of said, "Look, you know, you're probably not big enough, and you're probably not fast enough. I'd concentrate on your school." Um, and it never sat well with me, you know. So it never sat well with me. I said, "No, I appreciate your opinion, you know, but I, I think I can do this." And I, um, you know, I worked hard on my speed, and uh, I worked hard on my strength, and I worked hard on my fitness. And you know, I, probably where other people went out, I, I, I did ex- extra fitness sections and extra speed sessions. And you know, I was a bit, a bit of a footy nerd, and so I worked hard, and you know, I got, I got given a few opportunities. Yeah. yeah. Well, nice one. Well, you do eventually make it to the North Queensland Cowboys. Um, how long were you in their systems before you were part of like the top squad? Yeah, I just ne- I, I never, I never was ever quite in their systems. Like I was always, <clears throat> I was sort of there, but I was never there as a contracted sort of player. I was always on the on the fridge knocking on the door. I never could quite break break into the Cowboys, and um, you know, it, ironically. One of my closest friends, um, and he, he, he came across to New Zealand. Um, his name is Paul Dazolt, and yep. Paul, yes, yeah, Paul was very highly regarded at the Cowboys. And uh, I, I don't know if you're too familiar with Paul's story, but uh, he had a, a an autoimmune, uh, an autoimmune um, ah. disease that affected his um. <clears throat> Uh, oxygenating of his blood. It's called hypertension, uh, okay. something hypertension. Um, and he actually lived for, from his 30s um, into his 40s with a, with a valve in his heart, sort of pumping a, 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 a bit of chemical every so often just to ensure he got his blood got oxygenated. But long story short, um, me and Paul were always – you know, he probably was always just a little bit ahead of me in regards to the Cowboys sort of program, um, and, it, and it sort of forced me to sort of go uh, go away if I wanted to have a crack. And I ended up playing a bit of um, <clears throat> residence football, like Queensland residents. So I got selected into the um, state league sort of representative scene, and and that sort of opened the door for me to come back to the Cowboys, but it was very much on a, on a trial and train basis. So yeah. I remember going back to the Cowboys, there was probably, there was literally six other players in front of me and and, and coach Tim Sheens at the time, you know, I, I rang them and said, I'd like to come back. I, I, I back myself, give, give me a chance to, you know, is there a chance for me to come and train? You know, it's not about money. I just want to have a go. Yeah. Uh, and, that was in 2000, uh, 
in 2001 um, and I um, 2000 sorry 2001 2001 anyways long I, I, I made it my point of everything at training to beat my opposite people who are in my positions yep. you know if there's ever yeah, any, yeah. if there's any any pad work you know I'd, I'd, I'd be going out to give them a little bit extra and you know just I'm very competitive, you know. So I ended up. I think I earned. I, I, I earned a bit of respect from the coaching staff at that that stage, and I ended up. Um, I ended up getting a. I ended up playing the the last eight first grade games of the Correct. the season, and yeah. um, and got rookie of the year. Yeah. So I went from being about seventh string hooker to getting rookie of the year for them. So it was um. Yeah, it was something I was very proud of. You um, you made your debut for the Cowboys, as we're talking about, I mean, in 2001, as you said. Um, do you remember who it was against and where you played at? Yeah, I debuted against West Tigers Yeah. Um, down down at Leichhardt. And yeah. we we narrowly lost on that day. Yes. Um, yep. Good memory. But, They're very yeah. good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But it was a wet day, and you know it was a sort of struggling cowboy side at that time. We had, we had a lot of good young players coming through our program, but we just it just not enough senior um, good senior players um, just uh, give the team a bit of stability. But you know a lot of those players went on to have really good careers. Johnny Buddy played State of Origin. John Doyle yep. played of Origin. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Matty Bowen was running around. Um, Paul Bowman, um, mm. uh, Josh Hannay, uh, yep. Ty Williams, you know, um, and also Michael Luck. You know, just young kids coming in, just learning their trade, um, all at the same time, which is is sort of hard at NRL level because inevitably you make a lot of errors. And you get punished, and and you, and you lose games narrowly when you make too many errors, and you've got, I guess, too much inexperience on the field. Yeah, you were selected to debut at Hooker. Uh, can you tell us how Coach Murray Hurst told you of your selection and your memories of the lead up to your debut? Oh, geez, yeah. I've had a few head knocks over the years. Uh, real. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the intimate details. I remember being very excited. I remember being very excited, and you know, I just, I just wanted to put it all in the field in the first game. And you know, I, I know I went out extremely, um, extremely uh, excited, and at that training the whole week, you know, doing, doing op opposed sessions. You know, I just want to be involved in every tackle and just. Um, Probably just burnt a lot of a lot of the energy, just you know, run, running yeah. around like a chook with his head cut off, so to speak. But I remember, I remember that particular game because you know I didn't feel like I contributed in attack the way I could. You know, I just I, I remember I felt I played a really solid game. It still sits in my mind, but I wasn't sure I played well enough to to warrant selection the next week, particularly when you you don't win a game. You just don't know if you're going to get – the side was changing regularly at that time. But yeah. I remember he believed, he believed in me enough to give me another – I must have played well enough to get another shot the next week. And we played a highly touted Dragons at home. Yep. And uh, and and this particular memory I, I, I remember very fondly because uh, we ended up beating them by about four – well, about 48 points to six. It, we, we drop, we give this this um, dragon side an absolute hiding at home. And uh, I, I, I made a few, I, I, made, I, I remember making a long break and setting up a try for uh, Paul Bowman. And, you know, I, I felt like I contributed and, and played at that level the way I knew I could. And that was, that was, um, yeah, that, that was a real big confidence builder for me. And, and it sort of, I guess, re-irritated my belief in myself that I could play at that level. Yeah, I was gonna. I was actually gonna say that the round twenty-one game, uh, sorry, the round twenty victory 
against the Dragons was your first game at home, which was then uh, called uh, Willow Sports Complex at the time. What were your feelings like playing your first game at home in front of all your family and friends too? That must have been huge. Oh, yeah. Very, very much so. Very much so. Um, and, and and to play well, and, and to play well at home in front of my crowd, you know, it just uh, fill me full of pride. Uh, very emotional. It was a very emotional sort of type of um, uh, debut on, on your home field. And um, you know, I guess for me, I've always tried to. Let, let my performances do the talking and, yep. I, and and i felt very satisfied that you know i'd everything i'd been saying i, I knew i could back up and i did it on that occasion and I, and i sort of went on to do it a few times you know i played some really good games for the rest of that season as well and uh, and got rookie of the year for the cowboys and so it was like uh and, and got some good reviews in the in the media which were you know um touting me for a, a big future with the cowboys and um some some good pundits saying you know you should build a side around this young gaddis or and, yeah. and this, these these players these this is your future you know and that, that you, know, you know they're talking about your, your maddie bowens and your your josh hannays and your and your michael lux and the, who they're saying these are the players you need to build your team around Absolutely, um, but um, and and and, and I've got a good crack of the whip the next the next year as well. Yep. Under under um, under Graham Murray, um, I played uh, I think another sixteen odd games the the following year. Um, but uh, unfortunately, um, the in two thousand and three. Um, I was probably as prepared for an NRL season as I'd ever been. Um, you know, I guess I'd learned uh, I'd learned my trade a little bit better in 2002. And, yep. I, you know, I'd had a huge off season. I just felt ready to explode. Um, and I just, I, I just had some confidence and as well some experience at that stage. Um, and got selected to play in the, sev uh, in the sevens competition. The World Sevens. Oh yeah, they still had them back then, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> and um, unfortunately, I, I broke my arm in the in, in the first in the uh. first trial, and which I wasn't aware of at the time. Uh, in the first game, I wasn't aware of. I would come out the line and tried to clip um, Danny Nutley. It's a little, I don't know if you remember. Oh, Danny. Yeah, it Planet Cronulla. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nugget, 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 Yeah, and I, Nugget, yeah. And I just tried to come out of the line and. And hit him quite hard, and I just he, put, he used to put his little bumpers up like that, uh, and um, yeah. his little T Rex arms. He used to, <laughs> and he just caught his caught his um elbow right on um right on my arm. Yeah, and I just felt it go, it just went dead, and I, I sort of I remember I could just move my fingers, and I was that I guess is that much uh, that revved up to play that. Um, I sort of finished that half and finished the game and I went, oh, I told them after the game, I said, it feels a bit sore. And they said, and they got it and they, they twisted it like this and they said, does that hurt? Does that hurt? I went, ah, uh, no. I said, no, nah, you're right. You just, <laughs> corked, you just corked it. I went, all right. And you're sort of young and I didn't want to sort of, uh, you don't want to appear um, soft or whatever, yeah. I guess. You know, and I didn't want to blow my opportunity because I, I, you know, I had pulled the result nipping at my my, my, my heels. He he had had a huge off season, and I'd, I'd sort of got in just in front of him. Um, so I sort of said, no, I, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to play well this this sort of tournament. So they they said, no, you'll be right for the next game. So they strapped it up the next game, and before the game, they could see I was just wincing a little bit and they said oh give us a look at it does, it, does that hurt i went no they said, no no you're right just just go out and play you're right so i remember i remember um just before i ran on i twisted it the other way just a little bit and i just felt it oh 
I just felt oh. hurt. So when they were twisting it one way, it was blocking it in place. <laughs> they twisted it the other way, it was splaying oh. the traction. So I ended up, they were only short halves. So we played, I played the next game and I came off, I said, look, it's really short. And I, I sort of dropped the ball a couple of times, like in tackles, I just couldn't grip. Yeah. Um, and they said, oh, right, yeah, well, we'll send you up to the hospital. You'll be able to play tomorrow. There's nothing wrong with you, making me feel like I was an idiot. Ty Williams had copped a poke in the eye. They said, Ty, you go as well. Um, you, you won't play for a month. You won't play for a couple of weeks. So <laughs> uh, you, you go up. Ty played the next day. I was on the surgery table that afternoon. I dislocated my wrist and I um, <clears throat> fractured my radius. I needed a, a, a plate. Uh, and that pretty much um, uh, ruled me out for the, for the next 12 weeks. And um, during that time, the Cowboys, um, pl- uh, the player that came in, sort of played very well. Um, they bought well that year. Um, bought Paul Rahihi, um, mm. Kevin Champion came to the club. Norton, yep. there was, there was an influx of Matty Singers at the club. That, they brought really well. And so they, they, they won, well, I think, eight of the first 12 games or something along those lines or seven of the first 12 games. So by the time I even got it back from injury, they'd already signed who they wanted for next year. Yep. And they'd, they'd pretty much let me know during that period that oh, we're not going to resign you for next year. They had young Aaron Payne coming through. Yeah, I was going to say Aaron Payne. Yeah, he came in yeah. at that time. Yeah. They, they were identified as... um. You know the, the the player they want to sort of bring through into yeah. the future, and they saw yep. him. So very much left me without a club. Um, when I when I got back onto the field in two thousand and three, I played. Uh, I think I played about four games. They 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 picked me in local league. They didn't even pick yep. me in the um, state league because they they'd made the decision to blood the younger talent for the following Coming year. Through, yep. Yeah, um, and I got I got selected to play against Canterbury from more or less from local league, um, and I, back in the top grade for the Cowboys, and um, about four four or five games back from injury, um, and in that match, uh, I did my knee. Yeah. So Paul Rahihi, the the. He, the big dum dum. He, <laughs> he thought my uh, we were trying to tackle like that little nuggety Matt Utah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was standing up in a tackle, sort of wrestling him. And the next thing, I just felt my knee just collapse. And oh, I looked down, man. and Raz just speared in and just tackled my knee and buckled oh. me. <laughs> uh, and I and I finished. I, I remember I, I sort of. <laughs> I finished. I finished the game, and it, like it, it hurt. Um, it hurt. Um, it was. I th- it was. It was the same knee I'd um, injured previously, uh, but it, it wasn't the same pain I experienced the first time I'd done my knee. So I just thought, oh, that's all right. And I finished the game. I remember getting players player. Uh, we'd lost on that day. And I got selected to play the next week, and I'd done hard, I'd, I'd done the week's training, and I got to about Thursday, and I went, "When he doesn't feel good, I d- just didn't feel good." We sort of had a light start to the week, and I went to the yeah. physio, and he said, hey, you, "You're done, your knee, mate. You're, you're gone. You need a, um, you need a yeah, ACL um, replaced." So I had to go away and have my second knee knee reconstruction, and um, at that stage, I'd. You know, I'd really, uh, I guess, sacrifice. I was about, by that stage, I was about 20, 25. Yep. Uh, probably sac- I'd probably sacrificed as, as much as I was prepared to sacrifice for football. You know, and other people go get a trade, they go to uni, they go do something. I, I'd sort of, you know, really put my life on hold to give footy a crack. And, you know, I, at that point, I'd said, you know what, I've, I've, I've played NRL. I'm not prepared to move away again now um and we had an opportunity to expand our family business so yep. i decided to put all my eggs into that basket 
and um, yeah, very much um, made, a, I guess, a, a conscious decision at that point that that was the end of the pro- professional footy dream. And it's time to be a business person. Yeah. Mate, we're going to rewind you a little bit because you, uh, <laughs> you, you've jumped ahead. Um, and to everyone that's watching, keep those questions coming through. We will get to those, uh, ask George those at the end of the of the, um, of the the broadcast. Um, mate, we've, we're going to ask you a question that we've asked all our previous guests. Uh, the boos are always a big thing, but first NRL try. Do you remember your first NRL try? Oh, I'll give, I'll you, give a you a hint. It's quite significant yeah, in and, terms and you of your a, playing career. You actually scored a double. I did. I, I remember scoring. As I said, I've, I've, I've suffered a few uh, head knocks in my time. <laughs> so, start me off and I'll, 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 fill, up the, I'll fill up the bed. I'll fill up the blanks. <laughs> yeah, it was um, round 26 of 2001 against the Warriors at Mount Smart and you scored a oh, double. Yeah. And you guys, you guys uh, beat the Warriors thirty to eighteen that day. I remember that. I remember that day. I remember that day very well. I didn't realize that. that I didn't realize that was my first NRL try. Yeah. But, um, I remember coming out of dummy half and going to the right. Now, Cowboys at that stage were being trained by Billy Johnson. Yep. And he was very much about you know accountability and just. Not, not, not being afraid to rip into each other when you do the wrong thing. And I remember poking my head out the right because I, I, I saw a, a, a couple of big guys on the edge of the ruck that I thought I could beat, and I had a slow marker there. And um, and I remember going right, and the boys were set up left, and I copped an absolute spray, an absolute <laughs> spray for everybody on the left of the field, and I and I went through and I scored. Um, a, a fairly good dummy half try, and, uh, and as you said, I, I scored a couple on on that day, and yeah, it was probably one of my most memorable um, first grade experiences. It was the first time over to New Zealand. I remember, yep. you know, the, the boys were in the, uh, the were in the top the top eight there. I think, if not the top four, and no. they've been they've been playing pretty good. The Warriors. And uh, nobody, nobody expected us to win, and uh, we we very much um, we went out and shocked them. And the drums were playing; it was a full, it was a capacity crowd, and yeah, it was that was a very memorable experience. Yeah, I'll, I'll just have to apologise for Rob. He's actually on call for work, so that's why he's just dropped off. Uh, he's coming back in now, I think, maybe. Um, yeah, that game is very Apol- significant. Apologies for that. That's all right. You're all right, mate. Um, yeah, that game is very significant in Warriors history because um, the Warriors were on a five-game winning streak and losing that game had the Warriors finish in eighth spot and book a semi-final against the minor premiers Parramatta, a win, and the Warriors would have finished six, sixth and, and probably played the Roosters instead. Uh, and in contrast, it was it ended a five-week losing streak for the Cowboys. Um, so It got us off. We would have got the wooden spoon. I remember correct. we had we had, to, we had to win that to not get the wooden spoon and... Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we we very much shocked them, and I remember um, the newspaper article uh, in the Herald. I think had it was um it had Gaddis crashed instead of Gate crashed. It had yeah. um, Gaddis crashed, and it was uh, again. It, it just it set me into the it set me into the preseason full of confidence and um. Yeah, look, to, to be able to play well against a side of superstars, absolute superstars, the Warriors were at that time. I remember, you know, running onto the field, awestruck by some of the, some of the people sort of playing against on that day. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and the atmosphere it was it was it was a re- really good day to be a cowboy that day. But um, it maybe. Um, Open, opened a door or planted a seed to maybe allow fate for me to to, to, to head over there in a, later, late, a few years later. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. 
Um, mate, you, you touched on it before, uh, the late, great Graham Murray ended up at the Cowboys as a coach. Um, what transpired there with the changeover of our coaches and what was it like to play under Graham Murray? Graham Murray was a brilliant coach. Very, he, but he was a very old school coach, you know, and yeah, a, a coach where I think with modern players today would not be able to, to cope with the Graham Murray because he was very honest. Um, he was very honest. And when, when, when you did the right thing, he was very quick to give you a pat on the back and give you praise. But if you did the wrong thing, he was very quick, not very quick. Sorry. He was, he was very, he, he knew when to challenge you yeah. and, and the way he would challenge you sometimes would be, you know, like, uh, is not particularly nice. You know, he's going to, he, he, he laid it out to you in pretty black and white terms if you were playing well or not. But when you played well, he was the first to give you a pat on the back and, um, and, um, you know, encourage you and, and lift you up again and recognise your effort. Instrumental, instrumental in turning the Cowboys around. One, one of the one yeah. of the main main major factors with in regards to his uh, football acumen, his knowledge of the game, his recruitment, the people he brought into the club. Um, instrumental in turning turning the club around. But I, I think you sort of Graham Murray's are very good at going into a club and getting turning it around and getting results and getting it on yep. track. But his style of coaching, I think, for the long term, it's hard to have him there because he is going to upset people. He's going to press their buttons. And he's going to, he's, a, he's a type of coach that sometimes you want to play good to prove him wrong. And that's what yep. he's trying to get, get out of you. Um, and for people like me, that works. Yep. Um, you know, because... You know, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll have a crack at a challenge and I'll, I'll, I'll try and prove myself. But some people, you know, um, probably particularly today's players, um, if you, you challenge them in the way probably, you know, those style of coach is done, even yep. potentially like your, your Paul Green style coach because he, yep. he, he was a prodigy of the Graham Murray sort of That's right. coaching. There's always a timeline on those style of coaches because they just, you know, they, they get results. But at some point, you know, the noise becomes too much, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's let's be brutally honest too. Graham Murray uh, as a coach was fantastic. That, that 2002 Roosters Premiership was on the back of what Graham Murray did at the club before he left and, and headed up to the Cowboys. So... You know, Ricky Absolutely. Stewart gets the accolade as the 2002 Premiership Coach of the Year, but that was all Graham Murray. That was Graham Murray's recruitment. That was Graham Murray's systems. Yeah. Absolutely. His, his rugby league acrimon, his yep. uh, knowledge of the game, and knowledge of setting up clubs, you know, is second to none. I, I think, um, you know, and and again, most a lot of the early Cowboy success is, comes on the back of, of a Graham Murray, you know, and, and bringing the right people into the club, um, yep. not just on the field, off the field as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mate, you, you touched on all those injuries that you had in 2002 and 2003 as well. And also, um, you, you were out of action in 04 and 05, you said, with the broken arm and the, the knee reconstruction. Um, but we read that it was actually Kevin Campion that was responsible for getting you to the Warriors. How did that come about? Well, during my, during my period of being injured at the Cowboys, well, 2002 I was all right. 2003 was just a write-off. Yep. And um, I just, you know, I, I forged a pretty good friendship with Campo in 2003. You know, um, he, he'd sort of seen how hard I was working off the field to try and get back onto the field. Uh, and I think I earned his respect a little bit. And we become quite good mates. He was renovating a house at that point and I'd sort of go over and see where he was up to. And he was like a legend, you know. Like, 
people like Campos come to the club and a football nerd like me, I just wanted to hang around him as much as possible. He was just, you know, any, 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 any sort of, um, he brought me in and took me under his ring a little bit in that 2003 to, and, and it sort of encouraged me during my time of injury. And I guess I, I may have impressed on him, um, you know, my work ethic at that point in time. And I, I think he sort of seen, uh, he knew what I was sort of capable of um, uh, and I had a little bit of belief in me. And long story short, I, 2004, um, I, didn't, I didn't really play footy. 2005, I played local league. And um, I was playing local league for Centrals at that time and Campo came to town with the Warriors and he was on the coaching staff at that stage and he, and he come into, I'd set up my new fish shop at that stage and, he, and he'd come in and I said, mate, come come have a bit of fish, check out the new shop. And he, goes, and he came in and, George, it's nice shop. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing with footy? Right. What do you mean? He goes, no, are you playing? I said, yeah, I'm playing local league. He goes, no, what are you doing? You, you, you want to play or what? I said, no. don't muck around, Ken. But he goes, no, you need a hooker. I said, no, I haven't played hooker. I haven't played NRL for the last 2003. I said, I haven't, I've, you know, since 2002, really. You know, like I've, I've been out of it for the last three years. He goes, yeah. no, you look fit. It's in your contract tomorrow. I said, <laughs> no, I said, don't wind me up. He goes, look, look, give me a card. He gave me a card. And sure enough, he, he emailed me the next day a contract. Um, ten, th- I think it was ten thousand dollars to um, to come over as uh, as a sign on and, and match payments, basically. And yeah. you know, I, I guess he saw a little bit. Of, you know, we, we we had spoken a bit, and you, I was still. You know, I, I said to him, I'm, I'm all dressed up with nowhere to go, Campo. I'm fit, but I've got, you know, he goes, no, we'll give you a crap. Yeah. It's all right. He's a good man. Very he's good a good man. man. He's a, we caught up with him a couple of weeks ago. He's, 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 he's weighs less now than he did when he was playing. And I must oh. say, that that Campo impression was spot on, mate. That was spot on. <laughs> yeah, he's very, very good. <laughs> he's, he's one of the funniest. He's one of the funniest. I remember, I remember, he become a legend at the Cowboys because Billy Johnson. Billy Johnson used to do these things called twenty twenty twenty. Yeah. Yeah, told this story oh, oh, this is the rowing. This is the rowing machines. Yeah, yeah <laughs> the rowing machine runner and cycle. And yeah. anyways. Yeah. In in thirty in in four, Billy wouldn't let the air conditions be on, and this is middle of a summer, uh, North Queensland summer. Uh, you would just sweat. You would just lose so much water, so much sweat in this this gym. Anyway, Campo was doing it, and he started getting delirious, and he was just tell my to tell my wife I love her. <laughs> He's just on the rower. Tell my kids I love them. And the next thing he just <laughs> fell off the rowing machine and he's just started, you know, like he's just started fitting and frothing up. And we're in absolute hysterics laughing. Poor kids are having a melt, proper melt there. I mean, he's had to go to the hospital, but, you know, he's, uh, we, 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 we've, We've perfected taking the piss out of his voice. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a legend. We love yeah, it's not, not exactly hard, is it? <laughs> I, I got over there, and he's a he's he's not he's not an easy man, and he, you know he's he's not a soft man. We all know that. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, this is no nonsense, and, and he very much. Oh, listen, Georgie, don't fuck around. I got JV. Don't let me down. So I didn't know I didn't want to let him down, and we literally get to one of my first training sessions. And I, I trained really hard, and we had a beep test to start off. Um, I forget the, the venue we went to, but it was uh, we had to we warmed up on a beep test. Now, prior to this, my best beep test was eleven eight, yeah. and my the the target they'd given me was twelve twelve five. 
And I remember sitting there. And I thought, oh, they probably don't really expect me to get twelve five. That's, that sounds pretty high. I, I, I got twelve four, and I was like, that's. I was really quite happy with myself. Twelve four. That's not too bad. One off. Well, we done the fitness session after that. We done like I'll never forget it. There's four hundreds. We're doing shuttles. And afterwards, we're just laying on the ground in a, in a heap. And they read out, remember, I've started reading out some names. And my name was on that list. And said, right, you guys, you miss your beep test time. Uh, you've got to come back tomorrow morning before gym and do that. And you'll you'll get your time. And if you don't get it tomorrow, you'll come back the next day and you'll do it then. And I remember walking out. Of that training session thinking what have i got myself into i've bitten off way more than i can chew here like, that's uh 12 four, 12 five first session i said there's no way i ended up getting 12 eight the next day before no. and and all the boys turned up and cheered me on and you know i got i i, I got 12 eight um and then a few days later we went to uh, mount wellington and we had to go up the hill, oh. down the goat track, around the back and around the block and back up the top, and we're on a time. And sure enough, the Campo's there with the, with the <laughs> with watch. Stopwatch. <laughs> and and I, I go past, he says nothing, and then we have to do shuttles around the top. We, we do circuits around the top, round and round and round, and, we finish that session and, and then he calls out some names and goes, Rightio, these this people, this people, this person, this person, and my name's on that list again. He goes, Georgie, miss your time by a minute. You're coming back tomorrow, you're doing it again. <laughs> Two days in a row, I just felt I felt so bad I I did let him down. And uh, I got the time the next day too. The last that was the last <laughs> last time I missed at the at the Warriors. I thought I thought I was going. To be, I thought I was going to be on the on the plane home. I just thought, oh, I, I don't know if I can do this, but uh, yeah, I think I, I, I earned a bit of respect because I think they realised I, you know, I hadn't sort of trained at that level for a number of years, and they gave yeah. me a bit of a benefit of the doubt. And uh, yeah, I didn't miss too many more times after that. Brutal, brutal first training set sessions aside, what were your first impressions of New Zealand itself and uh, the Warriors setup that they had there at Mount Smart? Oh, yeah, it, it was it was it was next level for me. I I, I just um I I just I, I felt it was a more professional system I'd walked into. I, I felt like I was at a, at a, at a much um, <clears throat> better club environment um yep. i really i really enjoyed my time at a, at a, at a state club, state league club west panthers had a very good team culture um and i felt i felt that as soon as i walked into the the warriors it was very uh welcoming um there was you know you, you had these legends of the game but they led by example you know your ruben wickies your stephen prices even you know a lot of the other really well-established um, first graders there at the time, Logan Swan, um, Clinton Torby, uh, uh, a lot of, a lot of um, uh, and we had a, quite a few, of, a bit of an Aussie flavour there um, yeah. as well. It was, you had all, the, all these sort of personalities that, that were just very, uh, very humble, um, um, very respectful, um, and they led by example. And if you follow, you know, you, they and, and, you, and you had a go, they respected you. And um, I, I really, I really enjoyed that environment from from day one. How far into the preseason was it that you actually um, upgraded to an official contract? No, I wasn't. I wasn't upgraded to an official contract um, at no stage. Um, Oh, right. I, was, I was, I was, I was on what I was on for the whole year, and I, and I sort okay. of, I'd got, I'd got, I'd got um, in that first year, like, uh, I'd more or less got about 
three or four weeks into the preseason, I went, yeah, that ten thousand dollars not going to last too long over here, and I didn't have too much savings at that point, so I um I had to, I, I quickly realised I was going to need to get a job, and I was I was staying with Nathan Fien at, at at that point in time. He had some place down there at St Helier's. He was renting. We were going down Mission Mission Bay, and I walked past this uh, fish shop, and you know, though uh, if, if your viewers aren't aware, I used to sort of my, my background is growing up in a, in a fish shop. And I remember looking up and going, this is a sign from God. <laughs> I, did a, I walked into the shop. I said, do you need some help? And they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd, I'd, I'd train during the day and um, I'd go there and do do you know, probably about four shifts a week at night time after training for a bit of extra pocket money. And I did that right up until the start of the year until – uh match payments kicked in yep. and then i was sort of and then that was that was the end of my um my, my fish and chipping in in new zealand yeah there's just a comment here from tk um uh, the one of the legendary warriors fans over there that you no doubt would have met sacrifice george gave when he came to nz chump change wages and working in the fish and chip shop on the waterfront at eastern bays auckland on a hope of a warriors contract yeah yeah, yeah. it was um Oh look, I wouldn't have done it any other way in in hindsight. Like I, I think it, it it kept me grounded. Um, yep. uh, I think it it, it it endeared me to the um to the locals. Um, Absolutely. To, to the fans, um, I think they yeah you know, very much. It was a bit of a joke. It was a it was it was interesting how it sort of played out. Like. You know, I don't know if the other the, the playing group fully was confident in me or, or not when I first arrived, but they made me feel like a very a very important part of the club from day one. So did the coaching staff, but probably from from a, from the fans' point of view, they didn't they wouldn't have known too much about me. So uh, I, I remember, you know, like a, at first they were a little bit, oh look, there's one of their songs is. At a, at a fish shop, you know, it was a bit, it was a bit. Oh, how how good can he sort of be? Like you know, he has to go work in a fish shop. But I think once once I actually played, um, you know, and and I, and I played well, and I, you know, like my game's not a flashy game where I'm going to make a lot of breaks and stuff. You know, I'm going to work hard and I, I scrap and um, defensively and you know. Uh, you know, I was quick out of dummy half when I needed to be, and I, I think I think I, you know, the, the attitude shifted once I started playing football very quickly. Hundred percent. And, uh, and I think I think there um, uh, that those early days working down Mission Bay, the Fish Pot Cafe, um, really, uh, like I said, really endeared me to, to to a lot of the fans, and they respected me. I think more than what they otherwise would if I had have just rocked up and. Um, uh, and, and played, you know, on, on contract. Yeah. Mate, you make your, your Warriors club debut in the 2006 round three victory. Again, it's a club debut against the West Tigers, um, this time at Lancaster Park. What are your memories of that club debut, especially three seasons, as you said, three seasons since you last played in a real game? Yeah, um, I was, I was nervous. I was, I was really nervous that day, and um, but I, I also felt very, very well prepared. I felt like because um, you know, it it wasn't given to me, and I had to work quite hard you know, it, 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 in the preseason, and I sort of played a couple of good games in, um, in in the barter card at that at that point. And and the boys had the boys had come out and supported me. We've, we've formed a very good, good bond at the at the Warriors. Um, and so they were they were excited for me to ha you know. And so it, I didn't want to let them down either. Um, we, were, we were we were very close. So it was, it was it was a big occasion. I think it was my I actually think it was my birthday as well. And um, I remember, yeah, you know, I. I I think I, I think I, I think I may have crossed, or definitely put 
Brent Webb over for a try. I, I remember, and I, I had a, I had a pretty good game that day. And you know, I, again, I, I felt vindicated in myself that you know I knew I could play at that level, and I was I was actually quite proud of myself because I, you know, to be out of the game NRL for any length of time is is not an easy thing. But um, to have three years out of it and, and to come back in, um, you know, I, I just I, I just just I, I felt proud of what I'd done that day. Yeah, I probably I probably worried Ivan that day because I was going around, you know, taking pictures and in the. I remember I was in the dressing room and I wanted to, you know, I really wanted to savor the moment, like it was my, like it was my, like it was my last, like my last game. And I remember him sort of looking at, mate, what are you doing? We're going around next week. Just set it up, you know, like. And I said, and I sort of said to him, mate, I just oh, last time I played NRL, I didn't really get that many photos, and you know, I didn't really have that much memory, you know, like memorabilia of my of my time. I just yep. wanted to, you know, and, and I sort of, I had to sort of reassure him that my feet were still on the ground because he just saw me around afterwards, but. He, I, I, Ivan, Ivan was an exceptional coach, as everybody's aware, and he had a very grounding effect on me. Like he, yeah. he was. Um, he didn't talk. He didn't have to talk much to me, but when when he did speak to me, it, it meant it meant a lot. And he he took me aside early in the piece and went, George, I've a lot of people here that can do a lot of special things. I don't need gorgeous George. I need steady Eddie. Yeah. And that's and that was his that was his catch cry for me. So when I when I did something good, he just look at me and go, steady Eddie. <laughs> steady. <laughs> <laughs> I come off the field and I play a good game, and I remember coming off the field that day, um, in, in my first game, he just went, steady Eddie. Steady Eddie. He, he was happy. <laughs> And and if I, if I started doing it, you know, getting a little bit leery, you know, like because you know, uh, trying like little kicks or something or whatever, you know, he'd go, "Gorgeous, George," you know, and and that was for me, that was a little check. It was like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, mate, yeah, all right, I'll get it, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll turn it back. So, uh, but uh. Um, you mentioned photographs before taking pictures. Well, I'm going to bring up a picture that uh, might bring back uh, some good memories for you. So your time at the Warriors, um, you played with probably two of the greatest front rowers to ever have played the game in Steve Price and Ruben Wiki. Uh, describe what it was like to pack down with these guys week in and week out. Wow, well, this, uh, this is one of the big things for me to come to <clears> – <throat> You know, they, to come across the the ditch and play in New Zealand, like it, it was such a uh, it was such a motivating factor to be able to, to play behind a, a pack like this. So I just I just thought, given the opportunity to play behind this quality of players, I knew I could play really well at um, NRL level, and yeah, it was a dream come true to come and play behind. Two of the greatest props to play the game. Um, there's a number of other players in that in, in that forward pack who are um, exceptional as well. A couple, yeah, a, a lesser known name by the name of Simon Mannering wasn't too bad either. He turned out to be a fairly good footballer and yeah, he went like, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Luck for that club and. Um, in fact, the, the 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 entire pack I could go through it. Um, you know, Owen Goodenbill, Logan Swan, um, you know, yeah, Warangi Kupu, Louis, Louis, Louis Anderson, Warangi Kupu, Hami yeah. Lawaki. You know, like, they, they, these are just phenomenal players to play behind as as a dummy half. And you know, I just I just treasured my time there, and I, I count myself very lucky and blessed to have got the opportunity, but the pay behind, in particular, you know. Rubes and Steve Price, great men. Mate, you, you once shared a story, and I think it was on one of our Ruin Hammer posts, actually, uh, about Steve Price and his awkward bomb skills at training. Um, can you share that story or elaborate for our followers now? 
Oh yeah, Pricey had one of the the, the meanest spiral floating bomb um, kicks you'll ever see, and he had just perfected it. And if you, if you, he's just one of those people, if if you gave him the ball and for enough time, you know the stiv just worked out the right geometry to keep that ball, and it was just next to impossible to diffuse. And he used to love nothing more before training. Just or after training, like just putting them up for me and just seeing how many I could catch. And I went, all right, best of 10, put them up. And they'd come down, they'd land in front of me and bounce and hit me in the head, or they'd land on top of my head. And I'd, I'd catch maybe two or three out of 10. And just every single one that I just fumbled or dropped or that hit me or whatever, he'd just be laughing his head off. But <laughs> Uh, apparently, apparently, um, he ruined his brother-in-law Brett Tate's confidence. At, um, State of Origin camp is the, the rumor, and that um, that it, the coaching staff had to ask him not to not to continue putting it on the because he, they, they were worried he was, he was rattling one of the one of the better wingers to ever represent Queensland. So he's got some no more torpies, no more no more torpedoes. <laughs> They would, but they would come down differently. Sometimes he'd get them and they'd spiral and they'd float down, and uh, it was just he was he was a freak at it. But um, no, nah, good times, good memories. Yeah, yeah, awesome. <laughs> um, you, you end up playing your first home game at Mount Smart Stadium in round five of two thousand and six against Manly. And what was it like playing your first home game in front of the Mount Smart faithful? Oh, just a phenomenal, you know, I'd obviously done it once before in um, in Cowboys colours, but um, the experience of coming out of that um, that tunnel with the drums and um, and the crowd, it didn't it didn't even have to be a big crowd. It just always seemed a lot louder um, than everyone says people. that. Yeah, it always seems, and I, and I I loved playing there. I just loved playing at Mount Smart and. Um, yeah, it, it, for whatever reason, um, you know, it, it, it brought the best out of my football. I, I feel, I, I feel, you know, I played a couple of my, um, my, my my best seasons in the NRL with the with the Warriors. I, I played most games in that, in that two season period. Um, yeah, we essentially finished in the top four for both seasons, with the exception of the. The first year where we, you know, we got stripped of all those points, yep. and yep. we we still we still nearly made the um, top eight. So yep. we we won a lot of got to w win a lot of games in the Warriors jersey, and um, yeah, I, I, I loved playing there. I remember a, enormous sadness my, my last home game, walking off, um, knowing that I wasn't going to get an opportunity to to wear the jersey again, and. Um, Remember, remember, remember! It was uh, it really knocked me around the, the last game. I probably remember that more so than the, than the first. Uh, mate, do you um, you scored ten tries in your career, four at the Cowboys and six at the Warriors. Do you remember your first try in Warriors colours? Ooh, you're testing me. I'm I'm thinking of, I'm thinking it might it might have been against St George. No, South. Uh, no, South. South, okay. South there we go. at Mount Smart in a uh, round seven, 46 to 14 win. I'm assuming it was a dummy half run again. Yeah, most likely. I don't think I ever ran too far. <laughs> it, no. was, it was a sturdy Eddie try, not a gorgeous yeah. George try. <laughs> yeah, that's, absolutely. That's, that's how most, most of my tries are scored. I actually, the closest I come to a long, a long range try. Um, I remember we were playing Newcastle and and I made a break from the halfway line and we, we, we belted Newcastle this day. We were at Mount Smart and um, it was it was on that run into the in that sort of we'd won a heap in a row um, and we finished in the top four. And uh, I got to Gidley and I remember trying to draw a pass to, to pass inside to Grant Ravelli. And, and he and he and he picked it, and and I, I, when I when I looked forward, it was an open trial. I would have run fifty to score. I was, I was, I was filthy. Uh, <laughs> 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 ended up. 
But anyway, I think that, that was not that, right? He did. He did. He's um. He 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 had some. He was um a phenomenal player for the Warriors. He really was. Um, yeah. You know, he, he he's some of his efforts, um, particularly in attack. You know, like the numbers he put up on the board and the meters he ran. The meters were uh, unreal. Yeah, churns un- through yeah. the middle. Unbelievable, and you know, like he, he, you know, we probably give him a hard time at, at times that you know he didn't put the, the same effort into the defenses, the defensive side of things. But um, <laughs> it, it, in in tongue and cheek, you know, he was he was he was an exceptional football player, and 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 a really good clubman. You know, like he, he, he really. This is one of the really good things about the Warriors, you know, people like him and Ruben, you know, they've done everything in the game and they they treat everybody like they were important, like they were, you know, one of the most important parts of the team, you know, like they did make time for everybody. Um, yeah, it was such a good place to play, such great memories. Yeah. 2006 was, was a very good season for you personally, obviously, returning to the NRL footy, uh, nailing down a regular position in the game day 17. Um, but how did you find the difference? How did you acclimatise uh, in the weather regularly from tropical, coming from tropical North Queensland over to the cold, wet, rainy, sleet, hail, snow, whatever of Auckland? How did you acclimatise? Oh, look, I don't know. I, I, I didn't think I would like it, but um, I think, you know, I've, I've got a – boys used to – Particularly, Ravsy used to pay out on me a little bit. A bit of a sweat, sweat gland problem. I don't know if this tropical heat up here was suited to my, to my game. He used to warm me up that I was like the Lynx commercial. You know, like you lift your arm up and just the water would fly out. Like I just used to used to perspire a lot. So the, the cooler climate to play football was probably a little bit better for me. I, I actually liked it. I, I, yeah, it was just creating a little bit of... Um, it's, it's, it was a firm track, Mount Smart. Although it was wet, it was still a, quite a firm track, but it was a, it was a slippery track. So I, I quite, I quite, quite suited to, to the way I played. You know, and I could get out of dummy half a little bit, and it was sort of hard for people to adjust their footwork. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I loved, I, I loved, I loved the climate. I loved playing in that sort of. Uh, I remember Walker, our, our trainer. Craig Walker, you know, when it would be raining and windy and cold, he would say, "This is our weather, boys. This is our weather." And he got us all into that. He got us all into that mindset. You know, we just loved it when it was when that that really cold, bitter weather would sort of kick in, which was probably horrible for the fans. Um, we played our best football, and but I, I remember, I remember particularly that sort of 2007 sort of season. Where we were coming home really strong um, and winning a lot of games and were finals bound. Didn't matter if it was wet or, uh, or, or or cold. They were coming. They were coming in the droves. We had some big, big um, home games, crowds. It was yep. fantastic. Yeah, you mentioned uh, two thousand seven again. Uh, as you said before, your two years at the Warriors was you know the most footy you played um, in your career. You're all in that game day 17. Um, you obviously became a, became a bit of a fan favourite, and I think we spoke about why that was. It was because of your work ethic, and people really resonated with that. Um, what advice would you give young players coming through now in in regards to uh, trying to live out their dream in the NRL? Yeah, I think um, I, I I think you've got to be able to uh, it's not all about the the success you know you've got to be able to harness the disappointment and um part of the challenge of playing in rl is being able to be able to be able to cope with disappointment and and use that as as uh, to you as a motivation um you know i think uh overcoming overcoming like injuries or uh you know really having to earn your position by playing consistently by by turning up the training and competing every every session um when you know 
even though you, you might not get the reward straight away, when it comes and you've had to really work for it and you've had to really earn it, it's just it just makes your success that little bit sweeter. Yep. And it, it makes it that little bit more special. Um, so, you know, I, I guess um, it, it, it's staying in the fight and, and competing and um, being able to ha- being being able to, to, to use disappointment as a motivating factor, you know, not not dropping your bundle. Yep. Good advice. Good advice. Yeah. Very good. Uh, mate. We had Grant Ravelli on last year, and he told us a hilarious story about a wet towel and your retaliation, which resulted in a ceremonial burning. Uh, can you give us your version of this story? I think Witty told Witty and Lucky told us about this one yeah. as well. So your reputation yeah. does precede you. So you're right of reply now, George. <laughs> well, look, you know it does get pretty cold in New Zealand in the middle of winter, and. We'd finished. I, I would always sort of do my little bit of extras on the field after training, whether that was whether that was copping bombs in the head from um, Pricey, like mucking around with him after. I just I used to just love being out on the field, so I'd always be one of the last to come in at the end of the training, and they knew it. And every time I would walk into to use my towel, it would be laying on the floor in front of my locker, just saturated. <laughs> And quite often, I could tell that more than one person had used it as well, because there was, and and it got to a point where this went on for about literally it went on for about a month, and I was going home some days like with pneumonia. I was that cold. <laughs> I'd have to put the heater on. I'm sitting in my car to be wet, and I, I finally got to a point where I combusted. I I was I become renowned for going into what they call white rage where i just where i just lose my mind and, and they would love getting me to that point soon the moment i lost my mind and i just started swearing and spitting and they would just laugh their heads off but anyways i'd narrowed it down i'd narrowed it down to three or four people it was lancer hire um Michael Whip. Yeah. Who's the other one? Ravelli. It's gotta be Ravelli. <laughs> it's gonna be Rabs. Oh, there's a higher wit. Martin, Tony Martin and Ravelli. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, was actually, it was Tony Martin, Wit, and Hohaya. It was those three. Yep. And ah. Ravelli used to sit in the background and he used to like try and give me hints who it was. And, Typical halfback. So uh, anyways, I said, one day I, I lost it. I said, listen, you're going to tell me who it is. I'm giving you all ample warning. Something bad's going to happen. I don't I don't know what I'm going to do, but something bad's going to happen. To avoid, I said, to avoid it, one of you need to take the blame here. And that, they all stayed solid. So I faked going home and I waited for more to leave and I went back. <laughs> with Lucky, I said, right, Lucky, back. He goes, what are you going to do? I said, don't, don't worry, just hold this. And I gave him this big bag. He goes, Gaddis, what are you doing? I said, shut up, hold the bag. <laughs> I just dumped everything in their locker into the boots, um, boots, training shirts, the works into this bag, and I filmed it. And, and, that, and, it, and it turned out to be a three-part series. I called it hate, hate crime part one, hate crime part two, and hate crime part three. So hate part hate crime part one was me emptying the lockers into this bag. Yep. Um, hate crime part two was us pulling up at the Ellerslie service station, and I was uh, <laughs> and I'll never forget it. There was this old, there was this old uh, 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 Islander boy who was who was in the um. Who's in that BP service station across from LZ there? And he used to love us, Steve. And he used to come in and he goes, Ah, oh, boys, what you doing? I said, You see nothing. I'm feeling <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I said, I said, Look, just we're going over, we're going to burn these clothes, just keep an eye out for us. Anyways, I've, I've put five litres of petrol into this bag. I didn't think it was that much. 
but we've gone across the road to Ellerslie from the, um, from the BP server. And I don't know if you know the Ellerslie field, but it's a very big, long driveway. And yep. me and Lucky, we get there. We're pissing down rain this day. And there was puddles everywhere up the top near the clubhouse. And I've emptied out the bag away from the clubhouse. But little did I know that all the water, there was so much pools of water that the fuel had run and spread in oh. every direction. So anyway, I've got the hate crime part three video of filming and I've turned it on. I've, I've lit it up and it's just gone, <laughs> it's gone spread. It just started going in every direction. And all you can hear on this video is Lucky going, George, George, what are you doing? <laughs> Stop, start stomping this fire. But the more we stomped it, the more it spread it in oh. different directions. And it, the, the fire started rolling down towards the clubhouse. And we looked across the road. The old mate was just waving and just, you could just see him. He, he was just giving us the signal to get out. And uh, <laughs> We could hear the um, we could hear the um, amp, we could hear like a siren going. We 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 packed it, so we just had to go. Just leave it. We just got to go. So we gunned it out of this driveway, and we've left this more or less fire ball or oh, and oh. ritual burning happening with all these training clothes. And we got out of there, and we, and we panicked. We got back to. I remember we got back to the unit. Yes, George. We shouldn't have done that. <laughs> he told you not to do this. He like he just turned on me like a like a ravaged dog. I said, "Listen, it's all right. We'll give him. We'll give the club a call." And I remember we had the game. <laughs> we gave, uh, um, I think it was oh, man was our football manager at the time. My man, and we sort of said, "Right, mate, look, we've done something bad here." We've, We've involved the police. We've involved the fire brigade. Like we, because we we ended up going across the road and watched them all pull in. Police, fire brigade. Oh no. We we put this fire out, but um, I wish I had, I wish I had kept the video. We we ended up deleting it, but um, oh. it, it went down. It went down. In, it went down in sort of club folklore. Oh yeah, it and definitely it, has. <laughs> I remember. I remember that weekend we played Cronulla. And we, and we ended up losing. We played pretty bad. We were on a roll at the stage, and um, and Ivan was filthy. I remember we got back. He called me into the office, and he goes, George, I'm not happy about the fire thing. You've, you, you, you unsettled the preparation. You unsettled everybody's preparation. And I just I just went white right, rage. I went right on the defence. I settled their preparation. <laughs> Look at my preparation. The moment you last month, I said, I can't have a cold shower. I can't have a warm shower at the end of training. I said, no, I'm not, I'm not taking that. I said, they don't touch my shit. I don't touch their shit. That's simple. And I stopped. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think I ended up playing a couple of weeks in Vardacard after that as well. But, uh, oh. I, I, found oh my way back, I found my way back into the side, but. Yeah. George yeah, is George out of the same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing, that story. <laughs> oh, but yeah, as you, as you said, you yeah. found your way back to the side. Um, your final two games, you touched on it before, your final two games for the Warriors are actually back to back semi finals, but they're semi final losses one to Parramatta and then one to your old team, the, uh, the Cowboys. Despite the loss yeah. losses, what was it like playing the final series, the NRL final series? Um, oh, it was an amazing experience. I, I think looking back, um, <clears throat> we're on a massive roll. Um, we I, I forget exactly how many games we had won, but it, it, we'd, we'd only dropped a couple games in our last 11. I think it was nine from 11 that we won. Yeah. yeah, on the run home there, and uh, yeah. we 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 well and truly had um, the 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 Cowboys number throughout the season, um, and and uh, we we the first home game, I was extremely confident if we had have got through the through Para that we would have um, belted 
Cowboys at home. They didn't handle yeah. the, the cold weather at all when they yeah. came over early in the year. But we played most of our last 11 games at night in cold yeah. cold conditions. We, we didn't we yeah. play very many um, afternoon games. But starting with Para, I mean, you, we couldn't have hoped for a better occasion. It was, I think, I think it was a blackout as well. Of course, yeah, yeah, yep. proud. Um, everybody came in the black, and we started on fire. And you know, um, we we really probably blew a couple chances early in the match um, where we, we could have pulled away. Uh, one in particular, you know, not singling out uh, loads. He had a, he had a, he he played some great football for us, but. He probably threw a, threw a dummy that he wish he never, because uh, he had big Manu Vatavoy on the outside, about twenty meters of touchline, and you know, yeah. kept and run to the line. And we remember. I think if we had a score <laughs> that time, at that point, we probably would have run away with the match because we we had had yep. all the ball. Yeah. Um, but that match sort of swung, and we, and we lost a tight contest, and um. I forget the end score, but by about two points and twelve ten. Yeah, and a really hard fought loss in the end. Um, but we went to we went to Townsville and it was unseasonably hot. We'd gone literally from four degree playing temperature night games to to about thirty to it was about thirty six degrees eighty eighty yeah. percent humidity, and um, it was just. Yeah, we we did we didn't cope we didn't cope with the conditions and um, the black they, jerseys as well. Yeah, they put us in the black jerseys and their little guys. Close the field down. Their their little guys played particularly well that day. You know, we 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 ran out of steam and I think I think had we have got them in in New Zealand, we would have we would have beat them and beat them comfortably. Um, but unfortunately, we we had to get through that parasite and. Yeah, the, it was it was a it was a short short final ex- experience, but one that I'll always remember. And you know, it, I can only lament because we we had some good form against Melbourne Storm. I don't think too many people um, felt comfortable playing them that year, and, and we certainly did. And, yeah. And I I think, I think our style of football really challenged them, and it did for a number of years after that as well. And um, yeah. Well, definitely the next season, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who, who knows? Maybe, maybe had we've got through that para game, we yep. we might have been able to um to push for a, a another grand final. But that that's yep. football and um great memories along the way, and and uh, time of my life I um I'll, I'll cherish forever. Yeah, well, two thousand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And two two thousand and eight comes around, and you you head to the ESL and to play with the Huddersfield Giants for two seasons. Um, what were your impressions of the Super League, and and how did it compare to the NRL? Oh, look, <clears throat> certainly, certainly not as professional as uh, um, a, a, as the NRL. Um, but I, I was very lucky to to go to a very good club. Huddersfield are, are very. Um, <clears throat> Uh, a, a really good culture in amongst that club and I made some lifelong friends there. Um, unfortunately, I, I didn't get to, to finish my um, my contract over there. Uh, I had no. some family troubles um, back in Australia and unfortunately I had to cut my time short. I, I played half, half the season. Um, um, yeah, so I, I sort of got about halfway through the through the year and I got a phone call from uh, an uncle in the members who said, look, it was on the, I think it was on the Saturday. He said, oh, George, if, you, if, if your father lasts another, um, another, you know, six months, I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be surprised. You know, like he, he was insinuating, he, he was, going, he was struggling, you know, um, physically, mentally, uh, and with the workload of the business, he goes, oh, you know, he's, he's going to have a heart attack the way he's going. He's like, telling you what to do but he, he's not coping and i remember being on a plane back to towns on the following tuesday so i would just contact the club the next day and i told them look i'm, I'm sorry but it's oh, i'm gonna have to go home um and and uh, I, I called my campaign in the, in the super league 
cut my campaign in the Super League short and went home. It's going to be a regret forever because uh, I wish I didn't in hindsight. But, um, you know, uh, I'm a big believer everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Um, I did I did have an opportunity to actually go back to the Super League the following year. Like the, uh, there was a window of opportunity to go back. I was, I was held in high enough regard when Nathan Brown went over. Um, they, they, they had some injuries. And, and, a, and an opportunity opened up to to, um, to go over and it was put forward to me if I was interested. And I sort of, I remember asking the old man, I said, Dad, what do you reckon? And, he's, and he just, you know, he's sort of, oh, no, you know, it's, you've had it, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough. And I just had to sort of, I guess, uh, let it go at that point. You know, I just, I had to sort of weigh up whether... I was being fair or not. I didn't. The business was set up for me at that, um, and I, I'd, I'd already left once to play for the Warriors, and yep. he sort of gave me that opportunity to do that. Um, and I guess when I got an opportunity to to go back to England after coming home, and I, and I sort of took it to him. I could just see in his eyes he he, 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 he didn't want it, and he, you know, he. he he wasn't going to cope, so I, I sort of I put that chapter of my life to bed. But yeah, it's, it was it was it was a very hard pill to swallow for a long time. Yeah, I can imagine. When when you did return to Australia that year, um, you continued playing. You played up at the Northern Pride, and you actually got a swan song in our game uh, with the Cowboys against the Eels. Um, yeah, did you know at the time that was your final NRL game? Was like. Or did you think that there could be another resurgence into the Cowboys system for the following year? Well, I guess I was hopeful in that 2008. Like, I remember being, you know, I was, uh, they put me in their system and I, I was playing for the Mackay Cutters. Um, not not the Northern Pride, but um, the other yeah. Yep. But I remember at that point in time, Neil Henry was the coach and, they were, they were trying to play Aaron um, eighty minutes, and he just wasn't he, he wasn't coping with that fitness wise, um, nor defensively. It was just a little bit too much at that time. Um, <clears throat> I didn't I didn't think it suited his game. So I, I really saw an opportunity, uh, particularly with the way they played us over at the Warriors. Um, you know, to, to have two high intensity hookers playing. You know. Um, the way I guess me and me and Nathan um, complemented each other, I would sort of get into a bit of the hard stuff and keep it tight, and, and then Nathan could sort of come on and uh, play a little bit more loose and um, uh, and, and creatively. And I, I really thought that 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 might be something that I could do over at the Cowboys. But um, Neil Neil Henry was adamant he wanted um, big interchange players. And he wanted the yep. hooker playing eight minutes. He didn't want to waste a small interchange player. Well, I thought that was a mistake um, because they 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 particularly um, uh, they 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 lost a lot of games in the back end of halves where you know, their middle became fatigued and sides would yeah. would roll would steamroll them. But uh, it at the end of the day, it, it wasn't meant to be. I did get I did as you said I did get one game and I, I played quite well. I sort of thought I'd. I might hold my position, but uh, it wasn't to be. Um, um, what Aaron sort of came back the following week, and I sort of, that was it. And I, I, I guess um, at that point in time, I was working huge hours in my in my business, and I was really stretching myself to continue training professionally. Um, yep. And the following season, I, I just said, "No, nah, that that's I can't do both. It's just too." Uh, are too physically taxing and I'm not giving justice to my business either. Yeah. So I just made the decision the following year um, just to focus on what I was doing with my um, my business interests. Mate, just track, backtracking to 2004, you play your first test for Greece against Italy. Um, that must have been a really proud moment for you and your family, you know, being able to represent your culture. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've I've made um, one, one of my, my one of my favourite players growing 
growing up was Stephen George Arliss, you know, the, yeah, yeah. the, the, yeah, the, the, Greek, suburbs, yeah. the Greek legend, you know, like coming yeah. through as a, as, as a player of um, ethnic background, you know, I, I love George Arliss, um, Scan, um, um, Johnny Scandalis, John uh, yeah. uh, the hooker as well. Um, I got to play with another um, Greek legend over at, um, um, over at as well um, um it was but in particular with with stevie George, with with um stevie george alice um he what he, he gave me an opportunity to represent greece um he was the coach of, of that side and i was i was i was coming back from my knee my, my knee injury at that point in time and i hadn't played too many games and he you know he, to know that we'll get in there and you know he, he got me a part of that sort of uh um representing my sort of culture and it was a very proud moment i'd yep. sort of I, I, i'd hoped to represent the the, the previous year but I'd, I'd i'd done my knee um i'd done my my knee in 2003 so i wasn't able to play and my little mate paulie desult played for italy in the game in 2003 and yep. um he, he won it on the buzzer for them. He scored a try, and the Greeks were winning right up until that point for about thirty seconds to go. And yeah, I I I I couldn't wait to get my opportunity to sort of put the Greek jersey on and try and write the uh, write that. But we ended up playing in two thousand and four, and they belted us. They belted us. Yeah. About 50. <laughs> they just kept on getting better and better. They they actually had some some great talent in um at NRL level. And, and, that, and everybody started feeding back and and playing those games. It's, um, you know, there's been some great advances uh, um, in, in the quality of young ethnic players who are um, who are coming through. Um, not just for Greece and Italy, but you know, um, in, in all in all the world, um, these emerging teams like Greece is Greece is actually qualified for the World Cup um, yep. this year. And Steve George Arliss is the coach um, of that as well. So um, it's, it's it's what what sort of started off as you know quite a small level has really grown, and I'm I'm quite proud that I I, I got to maybe encourage a few other young younger Greek players to sort of come through and you know aspire to, to wear that jersey. Yeah, Prathanasta, he's Greek, isn't he? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think at different stages it was difficult for Braith, you know, like to sort of to to play. I, I know he's always been in and around, and he wanted to. Um, I, I, and correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think he has put the Greek jersey on, but I know he's. I don't think so. no, no, I know he's always. I know he's always wanted to, and there's been times yeah. where you know they they wanted to. Um, to, to, to bring him in, but the, the, he wasn't getting released from the Roosters to play, you know, that level no. of football. Um, but, you know, you, you look you look down the track, what's happened from, from a few NRL players participating, it's encouraged the younger players to want to wanna play. And, um, you know, it, it's been a very slow process, but here we are. They've qualified for the World Cup. They've got a very good. They've yeah. got some exceptional young players um, coming through the ranks. I think one 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 to watch out for is that Elias, um, young um, Lachlan Elias. Yeah. From oh South. yeah, Lachlan Elias. Yeah, looks, yeah, yeah. Looks looks looks, looks likely to um, <clears throat> um, don the number seven this year for South. So there, there's a there's a, a good Greek good Greek boy to watch out for there. I'd say another one is that uh, Peter Mamazoulis that plays hooker for him as well, uh, fills in for Cookie, yeah. Cookie's origin. So, yeah, he goes good too. I, I believe I believe there's the, the, there's plenty of young uh, young Greek boys running around in the in, in the lower grades as well, like in the in in in, in the, the junior grades who are coming through for the, their feeder clubs. So, yeah, looking forward to. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get into Steve Zach. Steve George Arliss is actually up at the Cowboys now. So, um, oh okay. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to bum onto the bandwagon there. He, he won't have a bar of it. 
I've, I've tried uh, <laughs> surely they went into the cage. <laughs> yeah, surely they coach mate, someone who could, you know, get these guys to pass off the ground from dummy half. He's he's, he's done he's done an exceptional yeah. job, you know, like to, to, to that to that level. So um um I'll be I'll be definitely watching and cheering as a supporter, but um hopefully down the track I'll be able to get involved and you know, maybe maybe dip my feet back into the sort of rugby league world and in some capacity. Um, hopefully, yeah. maybe even a part of the Greek side. Yeah. I actually did say when I when I came when I came to uh, New Zealand, they said I remember um, we went on to we went on to code. We went on to code, and then we were invited. We were invited some um, um, Warriors players, and they brought me on as one of the, the new players, and. And I, and I felt quite out of place because on this panel was all these New Zealand, you know, superstars of multiple sports. And they sort of come to me and they, they sort of said to me, oh, so you're, you're, you're a Greek boy from Townsville. How do you think you're going to fit into New Zealand? And I went, ah, you know, Greek islands, Polynesian islands. They're all just off me. I'll, I'll be fine. And they just cracked themselves laughing. And I ended up. I, I remember they, they ended up. They just they kept me on the um the panel for the rest of the night. And there's just I, I cracked a few jokes, and that sort of started a bit of uh. I I think that sort of helped my sort of popularity yeah. uh, in and around New Zealand. I got, I got to sort of do a few skits. They brought me back a few times to do a few skits. I did a few awesome. skits on Wise Guy, you know, Warangi Cooper, who's like little episodes he would do. And, um, yeah, they used to take the piss out of me. And, I, you know, I didn't take myself too seriously. And I had a great time over it. Did Ivan Cleary ever tell you about his acting career? <laughs> no. I can't imagine... I can't imagine he would have won too many um, awards. <laughs> Mate, have you ever watched the movie The Final Winter with that stars Matty Johns uh, and um, Matt is the? Uh, it's a rugby league story. Ivan Cleary makes a cameo appearance in that. It's a riveting oh. acting. <laughs> I would love. I would love to see that. I would love to see that. <laughs> is it a non non speaking role, or is it a non speaking role? <laughs> <or is it? laughs> It was a speaking <laughs> role, but all, all his dialogue got left on the cutting room floor. So cutting, now cutting his, room whole, floor. his whole like, thing is just him not in this awful brown suit. <laughs> oh, my oh, my gosh. oh, funny shit. He, he, he cracks, he, he, he really cracks me up. Or, you know, like he just, he's very good. He's, he's very good at creating a culture. Yeah. You know, he's very, he very good at creating a culture and, He's very good at not overcoaching. He just sim- he's got a really good way to simplify the game and um, bring the best out of people, and um, uh, I think make make rugby league enjoyable. He's yeah. a he's a very good man. Very good man. He yeah. is. Mate, um, you finished your NRL career with uh, sixty four NRL games. You played twenty five for the Cowboys over seasons two thousand one, two thousand three, and then again in two thousand eight. Uh, 39 games for the Warriors during 2006-2007. You scored 10 NRL tries, four for the Cowboys and, and six for the Warriors. Played 10 games for Huddersfield Giants, scored one try there, and you represented Greece in International Rugby League. How do you, George Gaddis, look back on your professional rugby league career? Oh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty proud of um, my, my achievements. I feel like... I, I um I didn't leave anything in the tank, and that that was important to me. Like I didn't want to, I didn't want to regret not not giving giving it a go. Yep. And I, I feel you know, as as much as I uh, I would have maybe liked to have had a little bit more longevity in the game, and and maybe got to experience, you know, uh, maybe some more finals, or maybe a little bit of uh, representative football, all, all the things you aspire to when you play rugby league. Uh, I, I know that you know I, I, what, what I achieved. I, 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 
I really worked very hard for and I didn't leave anything in the tank. So um, I, I, I'm, proud, I'm proud of what I achieved and I'm, I'm hoping I can sort of share that with my son um, yep. Uh, yep. in years to come. I got a, I got a big in there too. He might, he might fit in. He might fit in. He's, he's the shape of a little islander, let me tell you. He's he, he not a small boy. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be, he'll, he'll be bigger than me by the time he's five years old, I reckon. I'll keep an eye out for him. Yeah. Spe- yeah. Speaking of which, did you did you get into any coaching when your um, playing career finished? Oh look, I would have, I would have, I would have loved to, um, but I, I very much, I very much fell um, head first into my family business when I when I went home and. That sort of coincided with a very difficult um, next decade for me. Like, uh, you know, it's sort of by the time I, I got back to Australia, very much in the midst of the sort of global financial meltdown, and I found myself sort of working very hard and not really making a lot of gain. Um, and forced me, it forced me to sort of uh, have to redirect and um, take a different path a, th- a few years down the track as, as I have now and um, I'm, unfortunately I've sort of got into shift work which doesn't really allow much for uh, being involved in rugby league teams um, so coaching is not really an option at this stage but um, what what I am finding in, in my role um, as, a, as a I guess custodial officer and particularly in this no custody environment I'm in you know I can use some of my own personal experiences to sort of help people and yeah. um, I didn't realize that was that would be something that I uh, uh, that I really enjoy but I do um, and you know it's not a coaching of you know football talent but it's you know it's it, it, it's it's helping people and it's coaching in different ways you know um, so, you know, you, you can't sort of help everybody, but it is it is nice occasionally when, you know, something, you, one of your own personal experiences that you've, you sort of, you're using to help someone reflect on something and improve their life uh, yep. in a small way. Um, yeah, that, 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 that sits well with me. And I, 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 now I've, it, it's probably not what I expected I'd be doing. Um, but it's it's something I'm, I'm enjoying for now anyway. That's all that's important, mate. What else you got for okay, me, well, mate, we've got <laughs> – we're giving – yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say we get a really uh, exciting part of the interview. So this is where we – these are the rapid-fire questions and we ask these of every single one of our guests – so just uh, whatever the first name or the first player that comes to mind. Okay, who was your toughest teammate? T- oh, Ruben Wiki. That's what I have heard it said. Uh, who is the best sledger, teammate or opponent? Oh, geez. You know, Michael, oh, Michael Lucky's got a sharp tongue, that boy. He's got, a, he's, got a, he's got a sharp tongue. He just, I don't know if it's just towards me, but we used to be flatmates. He used to, he used to really wind me up, that bastard. All right, Lucky. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> a few people have said Feeney. Oh, yeah. Fe- oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Feeney. Yeah, there's a given. That's a given. But lucky he had a sharp tongue too. He lucky to slap it out of him a few times. Oh, oh that's a tongue lucky, eh? Yeah. Um, who, who's the biggest pest? Oh, geez, Wade McKinnon. Oh, really? Wade McKinnon, eh? Yeah, he was a pest. He, he could oh. be a pest. He could be a real pest. What what a player though. He was he was exceptional in the, in the, in the few years I was at the Warriors. He was unbelievable, oh. but. Yeah, he that, was... that first game in 2007, you set him up for the first try of the game, straight up the middle and uh, it the other day. Yeah. You put him over for his first Warriors try. Yeah, mate, he was uh, 
he was the form he put on the board for the Warriors in those few years is oh, that I represented the club like exceptional. Like he was, he, he was a great footballer. He's trying his Penrith that night. Just, just, ah, uh, he, he was just a tough. He was quite a tough footballer, like you know, for all the speed and skill, and you know, he just, he just. I don't know if, if just the New Zealand that that particular club just suited his style of football, but he just had great football yeah. instinct. You know, yeah. he he knew where his bread was buttered. He knew who to back up. He, you know, he would always be running off the shoulder of these big fellas like like any smart fullback would be. And you know, he yeah. he played some great football for the Warriors. Yeah, he did. He did indeed. Yeah, for sure. Who was your toughest opponent? Um, toughest opponent. Oh, look. That I got. I got to play against a, a, a lot of, a lot of. I'm blessed to have played against a lot of the greats of the game. Um, you know, I was. I remember playing against the likes of Gordon Tallis. You know, like you're running up, and 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 lining up opposite them in. You know, it just felt a bit surreal. So I'll, 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 I'll put, I'll, I'll rattle off a couple of the big, the, the big boppers that you know were, were challenging for me in the middle. You know, like um, Gordon Tallis, Petro Sivanasina, Sonny Bill Williams. They, these type of guys, they just so powerful through the hips. Every single time they'd run the football, you knew you were tackling them. Like they'd just be like hitting a pole. You know, so I yeah. put them right up there. That's a fair list. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> um, who who is the most professional in regards to game preparation? Oh, geez. Uh, at, at the Warriors? No, uh, just anywhere. Wherever you played. Yeah, wherever you played. Um, I, would, I would definitely have to say. Oh, I'll put again. I'll put I'll put Rubes right up there. You know, he was the yeah. ultimate professional, like, um, in, in, in his uh, weekly training. You know, he's always there doing his extras before training, always doing his extras after training, um, his rehab, uh, you know, his, his prehab, dur he, you know, during the week, going to physios, icing, uh, after matches, you know, like, I used to dread the ice, the ice baths. And you know, I would just try and tiptoe past them, and but Rubes <laughs> used to love it. He'd make sure everybody got in, you know, and it'd be it'd be the first in, the last out. So, yeah, I'd have to say Rubes is one of the most professional I've played. Rubes, okay. Who was the best trainer? Oh, look, some a, a lot of great athletes. Um, at, 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 at the Warriors there. Look, Warangi Cooper was just one of those athletes that just was good at everything. There wasn't anything he wasn't um, good at. So he, he would have been right up there. Um, you know he's still playing, eh? Hey? Is he still playing? Still playing. At, uh, I think he's 43 or 44 now. Uh, yeah, he's still yeah, playing he's over in New Zealand. Have to be about that. Yeah. I'll tell you Basically. what, he, he looked... Fitter now than he Fit. did when he ever played. Yeah, hey, carrying a bit, yeah. carrying a bit, bit of weight or no, no not at all. No, nothing. No, no chance. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. one one of the good guys. Warren, one of the, really one of the good guys. Love, love, love playing with him. He used to, I, he, you know, he, he took me under his wing early, um, in in the days my in my days at the um, at the Warriors, and you know he, he'd look at me and go. Uh, he just goes, my God, you're greasy. <laughs> <laughs> you're gre <laughs> <laughs> we, we used to have that as a bit of a, uh, a running joke between each other. Yeah, right. Between each other. And yeah, mm -hmm. he's, he, he'd have a go at me for being a little walk boy. And um, mm -hmm. more more him having a go at me than me having a go at him. He's still <laughs> having a go at that. Yeah. He's good value. Good value. Right. Well, who was the team comedian? Oh, geez, we, we we had a few. We had a few there. Um, 
Rabsy was always good for a laugh. Um, a, lot, a lot of the Islander boys are very, very, very dry in it. Um, they were very funny as well. Um, Wayne McKinnon, yeah, he, he thought he was very, he thought he was very funny, but thought he was funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he, he was, he was good value. We, 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 we had a, we had a really good crew actually. We, we used to, have, we used to have a good time. Yeah, nice. Probably uh, and all, mobile phones had cameras too, which is yeah, a good thing too. Yeah. Uh, and finally, who was the worst trainer? Oh. Worst trainer. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stitch him up. He ended up going on and playing um, quite a bit of rugby. The, the, the oh, it was a young. I forget, I forget his name. I don't know if you can help me out, boys. He, he, he played. What position did he play? Winger. For the Warriors. Oh, uh, Cooper Vuna? Cooper Vuna. Cooper Vuna. Yeah. Cooper okay. Vuna became famous. Cooper Vuna became famous for um, we would we would do our we would do our sprints and he would just come last on every single one and make us do penalty after penalty after penalty. Oh. And then we'd get to the last one. And then he would beat us like by by half a not 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 just not like by a couple of meters, but like a hundred meters. He would just flog it, <laughs> and it was just he got he got a bit of a bad rep rep for that. But uh, there was a, there was there was another one, poor but poor bugger. He, he wasn't a bad trainer, but I wish I wish he had have stuck it out. I don't know if you remember Frank Paul Newerstala. Yep. 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 Frank Paul just had all the skills. He had he had all the skills, and I know he played a little bit of first grade. Um, I think with the Roosters. Yep, he did. Yeah, he did. And I he got right through the preseason, and he he just broke just in the last week, the last week or two. He just it just broke him, and he and he never came back. And I remember just thinking he was such a talent, and he was so close. He had done so well. It, he wasn't fit, but he, he he tried hard. He tried hard, yeah. and he got he got through the entire preseason, and um and just in that last week, it just uh, I don't know if there was a, a, a an underlying family issue, but he um yeah he 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 went missing, and he never he never ended up playing any of the um the season with us, and I, I did mm. notice he went on to play um. A bit of first grade thereafter, but he, he, he sort of, yeah, he's 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 won it. He just it just he just snapped right at the very end. Yeah, right. But great mm. footballer. Uh, got some questions from the live feed and a couple that came through earlier. Um, who do yeah. you support when the Cowboys play the Warriors? Yeah, it's definitely definitely. For a lot of the years after I retired, it was um, um, it was no brainer. It was was the uh, Warriors. Um, in in the, in the later years, I'm, I'm I'm becoming a little bit more um, less, I guess, less interested in the outcome. I just enjoy watching the game, and yep. um, yeah, I I. I, I I consider myself more of a Warriors fan than a than a Cowboys fan, but I, I, I'm gonna, yeah, very I, good. I, but I, I, I can I can see I'm gonna as my son gets a bit older and he, you know, I'll, I'll probably push him to be a, a little cowboy because that's where I want him to I want him to grow up wanting to represent his area. But Absolutely. He, he'll always he'll always have a, a soft spot for um for the Warriors too. I, 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 before I forget, it just popped into my head when you are talking about your son. Pricey's son, Riley, is playing for the Cowboys this weekend in their trials. Yeah, yeah. He, he's, he, he's starting too in, in, in the lock position. So, yeah, you know, it's just I was, I was thinking about this the other day. You know, it's, it's 2022 now. You know, that's a lot of times passed since, 
since I last represented the the club and these guys these, these young kids were only were only like um eight years old nine years old when, yeah. when I was there and now they're men so it's it's exciting to to, to, to watch them um, come through particularly you know partic- particularly Ivan's son you know it's no, he, yeah. I remember seeing, him at, seeing him at training before games just kicking the ball kicking the ball and you know he was there all the time and now, now, now he's one of the greats of the game so it's it's certainly good seeing all these um, past players kids coming through now it puts, puts another interest into it it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. You spoke about Ruben before. Uh, did you sample any of his carver? Yeah, plenty of times. Plenty yeah. of times. We didn't. We didn't miss. I used to. I used to enjoy that that part of the the after game experience. You know, yeah. I wouldn't 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 go out probably as much as the other. It was like for me just spending time in Carver Lounge and the music on and uh, celebrating the win. Um, uh, Carver King style. That was that. That was uh, that, that was some of the special memories, and I really enjoyed. Now, especially walking up to the hotel room, and you can't feel your lips, and <laughs> <laughs> or, or most or most the other extremities of your body. But... Yeah, I was going to say that too. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you personally have any game pre-game rituals or game day routine that you have followed strictly, like any? Weird superstitions or anything like that? No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't too much into superstitions. Like, um, other than I'd always get a. I, I, I got quite thick hair, like, uh, um, so I, I'd always always need a haircut before a game. Otherwise, I feel I feel slow. I yeah. just, I always <laughs> felt a little bit quicker when I, I had the short back and side. So, um, yeah, just. Just get that little haircut before game day. Feel nice and fresh. Fresh fade. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously made a, a huge impact too with all those big long runs that you used to do during games. Oh, um, not too long. <laughs> not too long. Um, you mentioned Steve George Alice before. Who were, you, who were your other rugby league heroes growing up? Um, being being from Queensland, um, Wally Lewis, definitely. Um, yep. He was childhood hero. Um from 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 the uh, from Townsville was also Gene Miles, you know he was a, a and like he used to my my dad used to have a bit of an affiliation with a lot of the um, the, the South Rugby League club. They used to sort of come in, um, drink next door at the pub that was next door to our fish shop back in the day, and um, Colin Scott and, and the oh, likes yeah. Gene Miles, um, they, they, they were sort of part of that club. In the in their junior days, so growing up, I got to hear about them and I sort of followed the, the, them. So they sort of become your your heroes, watching them on the TV, knowing that they come from the same place as you did. As a uh, as a man from a fish shop, uh, what is your favourite type of fish? Ooh, well, I'm, all, I'm all, always partial for a bit of coral trout. Love a bit of coral trout. Coral trout, yeah. that's right. Up. If if we are, uh, you got to. I, I like I like to make it myself. I'm a bit spoilt with, a bit grown up a bit spoilt with fish and chips. So yeah, I, yeah. I, if I'm gonna, I'll, 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 I'll go the good stuff. So cold trout for me. Uh, do you have any, or did you have any hobbies or pastimes away from rugby league when you played or that you've continued? Yeah. On? Oh look, I, I was a frustrated golfer for a lot of years. A lot of them are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And I had to. I, I put myself into golfing exile about three years ago. I just lost my mind, and I just went, "That's it. I can't do this anymore." <laughs> I've never given up on anything, man. But I, I, I give up. I give up on golf. I just. On golf. It was just <laughs> just taking me to a dark place, and I was seeing a side of my personality that I just didn't like who I was becoming anymore. I had. I had to stop. It has. It has that. It's a frustrating <laughs> game. Like chasing that little ball around those wide open spaces, and yeah. Yeah, the amount of times you hit a ball and you think it's straight down the fairway and never to be seen again. I've lost so many balls down the centre of the fairway. Ridiculous. Well, that's yeah. what I went anyway. Um, what was it like playing with Jonathan Thurston? 
Um, I never, I never got to play with JT. I got to play. Um, I played a couple of games against him. I got to sort of do, it, um, spend a little bit of time with the club with him when he was, when he was there. But I never got to uh, play alongside him. But uh, I've, I've watched uh, watched him plenty. Um, in my years after I was in Townsville and GT, obviously, as everybody knows, he was instrumental in, in, in Cowboys' success in their, their first grand final win. And I did a bit of commentary um, and, and really got to sort of watch him closely. Uh, on, on game days, I was doing commentaries for one of the local um, uh, radio stations, Cowboys call team. And uh, it was just uh, such a competitor. So, and a lot, of, a lot of people sort of don't give him enough credit for what he does off the ball, you know. But you know, he the amount of times he's there to make a last tackle to stop a try, yeah, uh, was it was uncanny, particularly in that sort of lead up to that grand final. You know, he was he was yeah. such a vital cog uh, in their in their success that they yeah, had absolutely. Uh, and I think we all know the answer to this. Become an NRL player. What career path do you th- think you would have been in? Oh, geez. Um, Fish and chip shop owner? Uh, I'm, 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 I've, learned, I've learned the hard way. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to do nothing else. I had no other vision for myself other than um, following our... Um, you know, following the footsteps of the, the, the family business. So I yeah. honestly, I was blinded to any other possibility. I didn't see any other um, thing, but it really was a couple, it was a real, a decade of, of, of hard toil when I went home. Um, yep. It's can be very difficult working with family as well. You know, you, you love yep. your family. Just, I recommend to anybody that's contemplating going to business with the family don't do it don't no. do it <laughs> Save oh. it. just slap yourself in the face and, and just go burn, just go burn what's in your wallet and then just walk away <laughs> don't georgie do we um we really want to thank you for coming on uh and chatting with us so candidly tonight uh again another one of those uh, chats that they they just so unexpected for us the the things that we learn about the people that we talk to um we love being able to connect with our past players and give them a platform to share their stories uh we have a saying here on ruin hammer that those who have played for our club are forever and always and you george gaddis are forever and always warrior 128 thank you very much boys uh, i hope one day to be able to have a beer with you and 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 watch a, a warriors game um soon yeah, hope, hopefully at the end of the year we'll make our way up to Tevil and we can watch yep. the, the Mighty Warriors take on the Cowboys. So well, make sure you yeah, stay hopefully for, we can make that happen. Make sure you stay for a day or two. Make a, make a oh, weekend. We will. Absolutely, we will. Mate, yeah. mate, we really appreciate your time. It's It's been an absolute honour to chat with you. Um, your contribution to the Warriors will never be forgotten and you're forever part of, of the Warriors. Um Fano and history and and yeah, we we really appreciate you and everything you've done for the for the club. I, I can't I can't thank the, the the Warriors enough for the opportunity to to really live my football dream and um, experience uh, what what I had what I had hoped playing NRL would feel like. You know, I, I yeah. probably didn't enjoy my time at the Cowboys. I loved playing for the Cowboys, but I probably never got the satisfaction and the, the fulfillment that, that, that I got to experience at the, at the Warriors and I'll, I'll forever be grateful for that. Beautiful to say. Thanks, Georgie. We'll keep in touch, mate. Um, Thank thanks you. very much for your time tonight, mate. I'll see you on the fantasy league, boys. You will, oh, mate. Yes, yes you will. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Georgie's <laughs> in our super coach as uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're in, are you in both the, the leagues that I've got going, bro? You are, aren't I'm you? I'm in both of them. I've changed my side about a thousand times. <laughs> so I'm, have I. I'm spending way too much uh, of my free time on, I, on this. I went, to the, I went to the All-Stars on the weekend, and after the All-Stars, I come home and I redid my whole team just so I could get David for feeder in. Now I've found out that he's <laughs> done a rib cartilage. He's out for the first two weeks, so I've got him out again. 
and I've redone my team again. So, yeah. Rookie. <laughs> uh, uh, cheers, buddy. Uh, thanks, George. All cheers, mate. Thanks, mate. Bye -bye. Cheers, buddy. Oh, what another great chat. There we have it. What, a, what another great character. Um, another another great. I don't know if we call it a prank, but another great uh, yarn to add to the collection of the. We've had from the from our warriors chats the uh, the sacrificial oh, burning. We, we've we heard it from the <laughs> from the horse's mouth. <laughs> we have. Uh, it's good when you get the the confirmation from the horse's mouth, much like the um, the Campo and the tape recorder incident that we heard so many stories about, and Campo set oh, us wrong. Right right right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the, the next one we have to get on, we we got to try and get Orangi Corpu on so he can give us the lowdown on whether it actually. Actually, was him that injured Brad Fitt and not uh, Richard Bill Sandy in that grand final? At, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. There's a few, few guys in that conversation that we can get on as well. Villa himself yeah, might have uh, to try and get him on too. He'd be a good chat. Yeah, chart. exactly. exactly. Um, yeah, but moving back to Warrior Land, present yep. day, and um, obviously the news of the homecoming, unfortunately, being postponed. So, uh, uh, Warriors CEO Cam George announced last week that the round 15 game that was scheduled to be played at Mount Smart Stadium against Penrith has unfortunately been postponed due to the uh, New Zealand government and the COVID regulations. Yes. So who knows what that what that means for the remaining games that have been scheduled there? Um, they're saying there's still a possibility they may go ahead, but it's probably not looking great at this point in time. No, I think it's a, a week by week thing. I think the the Penrith yeah. game, they had the Penrith game, the bye, and then the Tigers game again in New Zealand. They were hoping to be in New Zealand for two weeks straight. Um, yeah. Look, the problem is is that um, any people coming to New Zealand have to self isolate for seven days. I think it is, and yeah. as Cameron George makes said, it hard. yeah, it just makes it impossible for for NRL teams to do that. Um, hopefully, uh, some discussions between uh, the NRL and the New Zealand government and, uh, can create some sort of travel window. I know um, the Wallabies had it. Um, yeah, they, they toured last year, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, they toured New Zealand last year. They were able to go there and play amongst much stricter COVID um, sanctions uh, that we were having yeah, here in correct. Australia at the time. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, uh, we'll, you know, as news comes of, of what happens there, we'll, we'll keep everyone posted. Uh, just a bit of breaking news today, too. Um, Warrior 238, Josh Curran, has uh, extended his say. He had signed till the end of 2023, and he's just extended that to the end of 2024. So um, in a great sign by club, you know, um, trying to build their roster after locking up AFB for a long-term contract. Um, you know, Curran had a breakout year last year, uh, was really, really, um, really good for the Warriors in the 14 games that he played. Uh, pretty much a, a, a must starter uh, every week and locking him up until the end of 2024 is a good move. And uh, it would have been great if we could lock him up for a little bit longer, but um, obviously... Well, hopefully that does happen. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know... Sol solidarity and con and continuity as well, which is very good. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the All-Stars, Rugby League's back, mate, uh, as we said at the it, beginning. It of the is. Day. Yep. Yeah, uh, we had the, the 2022 uh, season officially kicked off on Saturday with the annual uh, Indigenous versus uh, Maori, or as uh, Greg Alexander would say, Maori All-Stars game. Um, <laughs> it's the first time the event had been held, held in Sydney, and I was fortunate to attend. Uh, big thanks goes out to our good mate, uh, supporter of the show, Jay Harris, who um, took me along to that. Uh, a huge shout out to to um, Dave and Nat Curran, uh, Josh Curran's parents. Uh, met up with them before the game, uh, and you know they allowed us to share in what was a, a really proud family moment uh, for Josh, uh, who is a proud Indigenous man representing his Indigenous culture. Uh, Dave and Nat, Nat, such wonderful, wonderful people, uh, and they'll be joining us uh, come round one at the fan meetup at Sunshine Coast too. Yeah, awesome. Looking forward to catching up with them again. I, I. I... Well, personally, we briefly got to meet him at Magic Round last year, and great fellow. And, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listens to the show, so shout out to you. Yep. Um, in terms of on the field, though, both the women's and men games, they were great contests, and the, the Indigenous women were victorious over the Maori eighteen to eight, and they avenged that twenty-four nil defeat from last season. 
And the men's game, the Maldives obviously held on for a 16-10 victory with some great goal line defence, especially in those final minutes there. And how good were, you know, the Harkers and the Indigenous war dancers um, prior to the match, like spine-tingling stuff. It's always, it's always yeah, uh, a, you know, awesome to watch yeah, that. It is. As a proud Maldi man, it's it's always awesome to witness a, a really powerful Harker live. Uh, it, was, it was great at the end of the game. The boys came to the, the supporters section at the end of the field there with their trophy and and performed that Harker for us, uh, for us fans. Um, <clears throat> massive respect uh, to the Indigenous team too, who... For the first time, incorporated the Torres Strait Island into their war yeah, dances. Yeah, um, game wise, both great contests. The Indigenous women just too strong. I uh, thought Kira Dib uh, really controlled the the attack for the Indigenous girls, and Jamie Chapman benefited with that try double that she got uh, for the Maori or the the Maori. Sorry, I was falling into oh, my Brandy. <laughs> yeah, Brandy. <laughs> um, both feel very Welsh. I thought she was good at the back. Uh, and both Nita Maynard and, and Crystal Water tried hard to create opportunities around the ruck, but that um, the Indigenous girls were, were just too strong. Yeah, a couple of our former Warrior Wahini Toa played in that game. Uh, Crystal Rudder uh, for the Māori, Kira Dib and Shania Power uh, for the Indigenous side. And Warrior 254, uh, Big Benny Murdoch, Masilla's wife, Roxy Murdoch uh, for the Māori side also. Um, the men's game, we had... Our, obviously, our current Warriors, Cody Nicarima, as the captain of the Maori team. It was a great honour for him. Yep. Uh, Chanel Harris, Tavita, and Jazz Tavanga, um, also selected for the Maori team for the first time, I think. And uh, yeah, as you said, Josh Curran uh, for the Indigenous side. And a couple of our former players, uh, Aaron Clark and Paddy Herbert, who had a massive game. Yeah, he did. Um, playing for the Maori. And uh, uh, JTV, Jermaine Tanoa Brown, uh, representing the Indigenous side. Yeah. Uh, thoughts on the game? Uh, spiteful, mate. Fiery. Um, yeah. Great spectacle. It? Yeah, it was. Uh, so many redemption stories, though, uh, in that in that game. Like, Shaki Mitchell, uh, you know, dropped something like 50 kilos or something. Um, yeah. Saw him, uh, you know, standing there waiting for the kickoff. Uh, he's a big, big man. Um, Andrew Fafita playing after that horrific injury last season. I thought Andrew yeah. Fafita played really good. And then Jaden Nikarima, uh, after so long on, uh, out of the game, uh, got his first first uh, game back in the big leagues. And um, I thought he played quite well. It was nice to see him and Cody share a couple of moments in that game. Uh, I thought big day for Fida was dominant on an edge. Uh, that, that first try that the um, the Indigenous scored was uh, all for Fida, breaking for about three or four tackles down that, that edge. Yeah, was wrecking ball. Weird for Fafita because he normally only plays that flat track bully uh, type role in the the twenty meters in the goal line. So to to have a run from back in his own half was was good to see. He does look like he's dropped a, a few kegs this year. Um, the indigenous halves were what many tip will be the sharks halves this season. Um, Nico Hines, Braden Trindle, kind of expected a little bit more from them. I thought Hines's kicking game was quite good, and he tried to involve himself a little bit, but. Um, uh, they didn't seem to gel or the opportunities that I thought they might. Uh, and a lot of people are tipping the Sharks for big things this year. But off the back of that performance by their halves, I, I don't know. Um, Bit of concern. Yeah, the Fox, Josh Adokar, kept out of the game, hardly saw any ball. Um, great honour for him to lead the Indigenous, but I kind of think it's a bit ridiculous. It's like back in the day of Warren Boland out on the wing, um, captain him aside. And we saw it last year when... Roger moved to the wing and he was captain. He kind of too far away from the action. Um, and Joshy Curran uh, had a massive game until he was forced from the field with a shoulder injury um, that he copped from almost scoring that try. I did uh, text him after the game, a few hours after the game. He says it was nothing and he should be fine for round one. And, um, yeah, for the mold, um, they were missing a lot of big-name stars. Uh, Fisher Harris and Joe Tarpany had strong games. I may be biased, but I thought Jazz had an awesome game. Uh, he played some big minutes. He, he swapped between middle forward uh, at lock and then in that hooking role, which he hates so much, but he, he did quite well. Um, Jordan Rappiner had a great game too, uh, as did Dylan Walker. I thought Dylan Walker was one of our best um, with some really great carries. Uh, I thought Cody played an all right, okay game. I don't think he did enough as a as an organiser or directing the team around the park, um, but his kicking game was much improved on what we saw last season. Um, and Paddy Herbert for me, I know Tarpany got the man of the match, but Paddy Herbert for me was best on field, um, especially defensively. Um, yeah, that tackle he pulled off that was 
somewhat involved in one of those shoulder charges was yeah. absolutely massive. But particularly at the end of the game, mate, his, his goal line defense at the end of the game in those final few minutes was was tough. Um, and, and we saw Chanel uh, play a little bit in the halves, and he got his a stint at fullback. Um, he did do his best Todd Burney Todd Burn impression at some some point in the game. Uh, and I thought he nailed it. I thought he got Todd Byrne down pat. Uh, yeah, not the, obviously not the fastest man on the field. Um, but he did get run down from from the little hammer. So, um, you know, he's, he's got a bit of pace, that guy, doesn't he? Yeah, I, I was going to bring up the old uh, the old Todd Byrne tread, <laughs> Toddy Byrne treadmill that he was he was on it. As you said, though, like he, he got run down by yeah, Hammer Saifito probably – Probably the quickest man in the game, or him at Ocar. So yeah, yeah. There you go. I mean, um, for, from a neutral perspective, um, I really enjoyed this game, yep. and I, I think it was just just so pumped to have footy back. It was a, yeah, it was a tough, brutal, uh, spiteful encounter, as as you mentioned, and great way to start with the spine tingling cultural challenges from both sides. And as you mentioned before, it was wonderful to see like the Torres Strait Islanders um, heavily represented yeah. in, the, in that challenge as well. Yeah. Uh, I sort of, when I was watching it, I had, I mostly had an eye on the, the Warriors boys and you mentioned um, Jazz and Joshy Curran had pretty good games. Uh, obviously Josh before he uh, was injured. Yep. Uh, so I saw the showings from those guys. Personally, I thought Cody and CHD, like they had their moments. Um, yeah, like, I mean, Cody's backed up and scored that try. And probably probably want to see a little bit more from them. Yeah. But, um, you know, they've got the trial game coming up, so they, hopefully they get a bit of a run there. And um, as you said, like, there's a there's a spot open um, in the halves yes. uh, to partner Sean Johnson. And you've probably got, you've probably got three guys that will – uh, playing for one spot, so they 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 mentioned it quite heavily on the Fox Sports telecast that it was like kind of like Cody's audition to be a starting half. That was yeah. kind of like their narrative on there. So be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, I, I thought it was it was a little bit quiet, uh, mixed game. Did some good things, um, and yeah, we we, we shall see. Yeah, uh, what happens? But yeah, I did. Agree. I did note the uh, the Toddy Burn treadmill as well with Chanel yeah. making that break. Absolutely. Uh, but look, overall, just a great way to start the season, mate. Yeah, it is. It's it's always good to have footy back. Uh, just a couple of comments coming through. Uh, I've heard a number of media pundits saying that this from Caden Rogers that Brisbane will make the eight this season. Do you guys agree? I think Brisbane have have bought really really well. Um, I think they'll push for it for sure. Yeah. I, I, look. My, the way I, I see the competition, I think you, you've you got to resign yourself. Like the Roosters, after the season they had last year with all their injuries, if they're at full strength, they're, they're a top four side. Penrith are a top four side. Um, Melbourne, you can never discount Melbourne. Manly, after last season, you can't discount them. Um, South, it's going to be interesting to see how they go without Adam Reynolds uh, in the middle of the field. But they haven't lost too much in, um, in personnel. So you'd think that they're... they're and around there, uh, Parramatta. Uh, this is a year that Parramatta have to win the comp, or they're not going to, because they they have fourteen guys coming off contract and they've lost a couple of guys to to other other sides. So there's six teams. Um, you, you look oh, at- I reckon it's only the seventh and eighth spot that are possibly up for grabs. So you got Newcastle that was seventh, and the Titans that were eighth. And I don't. So I reckon. Think, yeah. I don't think Newcastle are in with a shot. I think Mitch Pearce leaving. Uh, has really opened up a hole in their halves and they're going to lack a bit of direction. Titans, uh, they're another team. Uh, see how they go. That No Jamal Fogarty there this year. So I, I reckon there's a couple of teams. There's the, the Warriors, the Broncos, yeah, um, the Sharks and the Raiders and the Titans yeah. all fighting out for those last two spots in the eight, as far as I'm concerned. And as a Warriors fan, uh, if we don't make the eight this year, it's a it's a definitely a failed season. Um, we oh, can't have any more excuses. Without got- question. Yeah, with our question. Squad that can do it. Um, we've probably got, you know, the best uh, forward uh, starting prop forwards in the game uh, in Lodge and, and Fanua Blake. Um, yeah, we've got a couple of injuries to start the season. Um, Torhu won't be playing. We've got a couple of suspensions with Reese Walsh won't be playing. Great to see Ben Murdoch Masillas playing this weekend in the trials. I thought when we were up there the other week, mate, and he said it was his first day of running that we might not see him for a little while, but. Um, good that he's going to be playing in this game so yeah it's going to be one of, one of the keys yeah, one, one of the keys that they mentioned that had been a, a real weakness of ours 
from last year is you know like guidance, experience, and leadership in the halves. Yeah. And we've got we've got that back in a more experienced Sean Johnson. And as we said before, it's just a matter of who is the best fit to partner him in the halves. So yeah, definitely no excuses. Um, and we should really be pushing for um, yeah. Realistically, we should be in the bottom half of the eight. I feel. I feel. Absolutely, yeah. Um, just want to address one question that came up in the live feed. Um, it says, uh, loving the new added graphics. This from Malcolm Earnshaw. Loving the new added graphics. Need to show the players first tries as they are talking about it. We can't really show video. Um, it's a bit hard. On the feed. It, it's, yeah, it's copyrighted. Uh, so for us to do that, it, we'd have to jump through so many hoops and, and so forth. So, uh, And the other thing is we can't use um, like other graphics from uh other uh services so we've actually got to create our own graphics to throw up um yeah so yeah so that that's why we don't do that and that we we're starting to add the videos add the pictures in i think it uh, i agree with you it does add a nice touch um so yeah yeah we're that's doing that from from moving ahead just to add a little bit of extra visual element there for you guys and if there is a way that we can bring you videos and highlights and that kind of thing then and we can work that out then yeah we'll be definitely be do- we'll definitely be doing that absolutely yeah um speaking of the footy starting again we've got a trial game this weekend uh that will be on at 4 p.m uh, new south wales time and we'll be hosting a live watch party um of that trial match against the storm and our very special guest will be Arpai uh from hold the ball yep. so you can join us uh we'll probably be going live at about quarter to four or quarter to three queensland time for you guys up here yep um so so make sure you tune in there even if you're at the game and you get a little bit bored, put your earphones in and listen to us uh, waffle on. <laughs> Where, where's this game played at? This is at Redcliffe, isn't it? No. Uh, oh, the Titan, Titans, oh, Titans one's at Redcliffe. Yeah, where's it? is this one down? It's not down in Melbourne, is it? Is it up in Queen? I've got no idea where it's at. I can't even remember. Someone, yeah, actually, someone uh, throw up where it is. Yeah, anyone know where it is? <laughs> Chuck it in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway. Oh, hang on, it's Sunshine Coast. Ah, of course, Sunny Coast Stadium. Sunshine Coast Stadium, yeah, yeah of course. Yep. Yeah. Uh, plenty plenty more coming up on Ruin Hammer as well. We're only just getting started, guys. Uh, live chats and events in 2022. So 23rd of February, we've got our NRLW preview show, and we've got some of the stars of the NRLW joining us for that live. 26th of February, we've got another live watch party for the next second trial. Uh, and that will be the Warriors versus Titans at Redcliffe. And this time we'll be joined by Brad and Richie from the standoff, our, our good mates. Um, 20, uh, 2nd of March, Warriors 2022 uh, season preview. And again, uh, Brad and Richie from the standoff will be joining us for that to go over the season coming up. 9th of March, great day that one. Uh, Cam George, Warriors CEO, obviously will be joining us for a chat then. Uh, always great to catch up with him and to know all the happenings going on behind the scenes as well. Yep. And 16th of March, we will have our round one review. And of course, we'll continue to make those connections uh, with our former players and bring you more of those interviews like we had tonight that you guys all enjoy. Absolutely. And um just so uh, we've also got some fan meetups organised uh, for this season. They can be found if you go to our link tree uh, and also on our Facebook events page. Uh, so for round one, the game at Sunshine Coast Stadium. We've got a fan meetup at a place called Your Mates Brewery uh, at 2 p.m. And that's on Saturday, the 12th of March. And Warriors legend, uh, Warrior 121 Steve Price will be joining us at the brew house and then uh, to watch the game with us. So that'll be good. And, just quickly, I uh, just want to send our condolences to to Pricey, uh, yep. who um, lost his father last week. Um, so, yeah, we just want to uh, say that we're thinking of you, Pricey, yep. and um, we send you all our, our uh, sympathies, brother. Yeah, yeah, deepest, deepest condolences to the whole family. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and also Magic Round. We've got Magic Round locked in at the Lord Alfred Hotel at 12 p.m. Saturday the 5th of May. And special guest there will be Warrior 76, Mark Tukey, Warrior 86, Kevin Campion, and uh, Warrior 127, Grant Ravelli. So um, put those ones in your diary. Uh, and, of course, if you get to the games, make sure you come uh, find us, say hello. Uh, hopefully we'll have some posters and, and stuff to give out um, 
uh, at the games. Uh, Caden Rogers has said, how's the merch coming along? Uh, final stages of prep at the moment. We're just uh, going back and forth to lock in a few minor details. So hopefully next Wednesday we'll be able to have a preview, uh, show you guys a preview of the first lot of merch that's going to be dropping. And when it does drop, we're going to do it as a, it's going to be a three-day pre-order. Pre-sale. Um, pre-sale, yep. yep. And then, um, yeah, so obviously we'll keep you all updated on that. But, uh, yeah, it's coming along pretty nice, mate, at the moment. It's it's looking very good. And we'll sh- we're will we excited to show you as soon as we can. But, um, yeah, as we said, just um, finalising a few things there. Yeah, so we're going to have merch that you can buy and there's going to be merch that is going to be specifically for Patreon. Uh, and speaking of Patreon, um, just a reminder that we're on that. Uh, the membership platform enables you, our followers, to show your support. Uh, for all that we do uh, and support the content we provide by signing up for a monthly subscription. Um, Patreon supports multiple tier levels to suit all budgets. Uh, but at the moment, for now, we've just got the basic bronze one. Uh, but once the merch drops, we'll obviously have the um, the, other, the other Patreon uh, levels coming up. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you can head to our Patreon page. The link is on the screen there as well, and you can show your support to us. Subscribe to our bronze tier, which is set to the lowest amount possible, which is three dollars a month, which is you know next to nothing. Um, and as we said before, we've partnered with Torius Screen Print, and they're producing a range of merchandise for us. It's going to be available very soon. As we said, we were just working through that. We've had we've seen the initial designs, and we're just making a few tweaks to that. So we're going to be releasing that merchandise. Uh, we reckon in the next few weeks to a month. Uh, so keep your eyes open. We'll we'll keep you guys in the loop, and we'll be having. As I have said before, some of that exclusive Patreon merchandise that will only be available for you for Patreon supporters. But we will also have a range of T-shirts and these caps here um, that will be for sale as well for you guys that are interested in purchasing. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so, so our silver, gold, and diamond, platinum subscribers, those tiers will be available once we've uh, worked out the the packages that will be available to you guys. Yep. Um, we'd like to thank those who have subscribed to our Bronze Tier Patreon program so far. Uh, Daniel Delore, Peregrine Falconer, Sean Kurzweil, Nick McKercher, Mary Carter, Fabian Moroa, uh, Ciala Afamasanga, Stevie Williams, Christian Catley, Alf Tualave, TK Harris, Ted Clark, Inamete, Lisa Marie Bateman, Ken Wills, Nigel Phillips and Kane Fraser. Thank you all so very, very much. We really do appreciate your support. Absolutely. Yeah, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for supporting us and helping us to bring this uh, this product to you guys. Uh, don't forget, if you do miss any of our live shows, you can catch up on our Facebook page by going to our video section there, or you can go to YouTube channel and catch up uh, via the YouTube. Uh, the easiest way to find our videos is to head to the link tree, which is um, the, the best way to catch up with all our interviews, chats, um, and anything, basically anything that we have done. And the link is on your screen there. And don't forget to hit subscribe on our YouTube channel so you'll never miss any of our stream content. It doesn't cost a thing, you know. It doesn't cost a thing, mate. Um, and if you're a podcast fan, you can catch all our episodes on plat- podcast platforms. We're on Spotify, uh, Apple, Google, Breaker, Radio Direct, iHeartRadio. Uh, make sure you subscribe to us there. We upload our episodes so that um, they're pretty much ready to listen to every Thursday morning. So... Uh, tonight's episode will be ready to listen to on your way to work in the morning. Uh, and please head to our Ruin Hammer Instagram page where we upload content daily to keep our followers informed of all our upcoming events, uh, any Warriors news, player movements, and all other Warrior-related content. Definitely. Well, mate, that's a wrap from us tonight uh, for our second show of the year of Season 3. I'll get it right at the end if I didn't get it right at the start. <laughs> um, we, we definitely want to... <laughs> As I said, time has gone by so fast and it has, it's been it? a blur, but it's been a wonderful blur. Yep. And we sincerely want to thank our, our special guest for tonight, Warrior 128, Georgie Gaddis. Thanks for coming on for a chat, mate. It was more than entertaining. And uh, we very much appreciate you giving us our time and for all the, the listeners as well. Yeah, we do. Um, thanks, everyone, for, for tuning in. I just noticed the comment there from... DK, uh, another great show, boys, apart from reminding me of no home games in New Zealand. Mate, I really do Sorry, feel for you. Yeah, yeah, we really do feel for you. Um, and we're not saying that like as smart asses or anything like that. It, it, 
Yeah. The team really needs to get home. Uh, the fans back home really need to get some footy, uh, be able to watch the boys play. So hopefully something happens um, in the next couple of months for the teams to get there. Uh, but you, mate, you're a champion. Uh, what is it? It's, uh, what, 11, 12, 1 o'clock oh. in the morning in New Zealand? TK's still up watching us. Uh, mate, you, you're a champion, TK. We can't wait to get over there and, and catch up with you in person again. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, have a beer and, and chew the fat. So... Yeah, hang in there, mate, and hopefully there's some footy action coming your way yep. later in the year. Make sure you tune in on uh, Saturday um, for our live watch party. Should be a little bit of fun, some banter. We all get to to watch the the Warriors run around. Um, be a lot of new faces to have a look at uh, as well. Um, and then next Wednesday we've got our NRLW preview. Preview. Um, We've got three girls coming on next week. We've got Crystal Rota from the Newcastle Knights. We've got Maddie Bartlett from the Dragons. We've got Bree Clark from the Titans. Um, all have played for the uh, Warriors Wahini Toa uh, 2020 and, and 2019. Um, at the moment, we can't get any uh, Eels, Broncos or Roosters on because they train on Wednesday nights. Um, but we have got some players lined up. So it's just a matter of we may have to do a, a Tuesday night show uh, midway through the NRLW preview, uh, NRLW season just to get some of these girls on to to showcase um, those sides as well. But, um, yeah, next week we, we'll be talking to Dragons and Knights and um, the Titans girls uh, and uh, as they head into the first round of the NRLW, which is the following weekend. So it uh, should be fun. But, yeah, thanks again, everyone, for joining us. I uh, look forward to your company on Saturday. Saturday afternoon it is. And go the Warriors. Until then, go the Warriors. Go the Warriors. Thanks everyone.